All right, so this is another session of Spelljammer, uh, Monster Hunter Edition. In our last session, uh, you guys met basically the undead ex-boyfriend of Topola, uh, Grimsvod, and his ship, uh, The Last Breath, which you see here on the screen right now. Um, you guys, he came aboard, you guys had a little bit of parlay discussing how he could possibly help you guys build up a armada, alliance, whatever, to uh, battle against or fight against the uh, Xerixian Empire. Um, he shared with you that uh, he is no friend to the Xerixian Empire. Matter of fact, he and his fleet have been harassing any Xerixian ship that's become within this area. Uh, to the point where they came back with uh, a vengeance and basically destroyed most of his fleet with the exception of this one ship that you guys see here now. Um, it is badly damaged, not just because it's a vampire ship. It actually took a lot of damage from the Xerxian Empire, but um, he has basically agreed with you guys after you guys did a little negotiating. Basically, I think I recall you guys exchanged magic items as a show of good faith. I think he gave his pipes of haunting to someone, as I recall. Does that ring a bell? Traded with somebody. Gave his pipes of uh, haunting. You guys gave him a, a, a comparable magic item as a show of good faith. And then as that negotiation was going on, a, a ghost by the name of Agony that uh, Grimzod's familiar with took possession of Flinch, the first mate. And basically told Grimzod that uh, his days of uh, running, captaining the, the last breath were over as the ship pulled away from the crap. What was Commander Crux's ship called? Uh, I'm drawing a blank on what is the living uh, crap, the living tree tr ship. I forget the name of it now. Sorry, I'm a horrible DM. Uh, but you guys were able to think. Like, throw a rope over, dimension door, jump over to the ship, went below, uh, battled and fought a bunch of the vampires, defeated a, uh, a ogre zombie. And that is when Grimzod came aboard and told you guys that of his secret weapon that he had aboard this ship that would help you guys. Um, down in the lower hold, uh, you guys discovered there was a unconscious princess that uh, Grimzod told you was Princess Zadalia, the daughter of uh, basically the king of the Xerixian Empire. And by having her, he thought that would be a, a very good negotiating tool or secret weapon, what have you, uh, in your quest to take on the Xerixian Empire. Uh, as you guys approach the brig where she was laying unconscious, it was Teddy that looked in first the little... Uh, I forget what he calls a little four by six little viewing window in the door. And as he did that um, meta knowledge now, he basically got possessed by a ghost and turned and raised his battle axe towards Simon, which was the guy right next to him. And that is where we left off the last session. Anything else did you guys remember that I missed for a inspiration card? <laughs> Um. Yeah, <laughs> Rich was gonna uh, cast um, protection from good or evil on him. Not, not Rich. No. Oh. Yeah, somebody was I'm gonna cast uh, protection from good and evil, and um, clear that right up. That possession, which yeah, you were gonna right. hand wave, is what you said. Oh, did I? Well, yeah. I had you guys fooled, didn't I? <laughs> no, that's no, that's not really how it went. Protection from evil or good on somebody who's already possessed just gives them advantage on their saving throws. Correct. But we yeah. realized at the end, so we weren't going to be able to hand wave that, and we decided to finish it off. We've decided to start in initiative order at the beginning of tonight and decide, and then take it from there. Uh, Rich, drop your token in here right next to Conch, since Conch is not here tonight, and we'll assume you start right here. And then everyone can go ahead and roll an initiative, and we'll pick up from there.
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Does Teddy have a negative in his decks? That was a freaking zero. <laughs> oh, he does have a negative. That's awesome. All right, who are we missing? One more, it looks like. Can't find uh, Arnold's token. Hang on. Oh, let me drop it in there for you. Yeah, I don't see it under the... Um... Spelljammer PCs towards the bottom says Arnold sidekick. I just dropped you in there. I see sidekicks. Oh, I made it go far enough. Spelljammer PCs. Under spell jammer light of Zerixis. Damn. But it's okay. I got your token on the screen. You can All shift right, double then, click. Don't worry don't about it. the sheet if you want. Well, I had the sheet on the first page you were on. I, I had it. I saw his token, but I don't see it here. Oh, guild members. Senior guild members. Oh, I. I hmm. Oh, that's right. Okay. I found it. Never mind. Good. Okay. Need your roll initiative still, Arnold. Got it. Stay late and a dollar short, but we're getting there. I am not seeing it if you rolled it. No, I'm looking. Oh, hold on. It's tiny on this sheet. I'll click on your token and then the upper left yeah, hand. There should be a knit button. Sir? Oh, yep. I see it. Okay. Everybody's in. Sort descending. You rolled twice, Brian. The first roll was a 13. Oh, well, that sucks oh, for him. Up different. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one who told him, you're the one who kept telling him he hadn't rolled, so he rolled a second time. <laughs> That's why I did roll a second Whether time. Whether he got a 13 or a 7, he's still in the same spot in turn order, so we're good. That's fine. I'm all good. <laughs> all right. So, Simon, you see Teddy turn and raise a battle axe. What are you doing with that information? Nothing. Just down here. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to cast protection from evil and or good <clears throat> on Teddy. Okay. Um, and then I am going to um give him a little uh, bonus action reach around and see what he's got. <laughs> God. Oh, yeah, I missed all that in the recap, too. How many times you try to pilfer something from a dead body or something, right? Yep. Okay, what'd you get last time from the Ogre Guts? I forget. It was like a a mannequin goblin or something like that. Oh, yeah, I wrote it all down. I don't remember what. Yeah, that's what it was. It was a <laughs> goblin, a little gal, goblin doll of some sort. Okay. All right, give me your sleight of hand. <sighs> No, it's investigation because it's technically my investigation skill. Okay. Uh, 22. Holy shit. Way to go, gotta, David Copperfield. Got to write this down. <laughs> David Copperfield. Hold on, Gary. That was good. I'll give you a card for that one. You've been w waiting for that one all week, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was classic. I almost spit tea all over my keyboard. <laughs> there you go, Gary. Thank you, sir. Well, the 24 to pilfer Teddy's something or another. Okay. Anything else, Simon? Is that a no? Are you on mute? Yep. That's a no. Okay. Okay. Arnold. Hmm. Let's see. Teddy's there. Simon's there. I'm way back here. Hmm. Teddy, what is wrong? Uh, oh, man, I don't have anything for defensive I can cast on you. Um, huh. Well, I guess uh, I'm just going to cast Spirit Weapon and prep. So there's not really I can do. I don't see anybody wounded or hurt. So I'll need an icon for that or a token for that. I think I did this last time. I forgot to put in a little mm -hmm. thing for these. Uh, spirit weapon. Not a shammer, Brian. How about a hammer? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, that's, cool. oh, that's a big <laughs> hammer. <laughs> and put it right into Teddy. There you go. Is that good? 
Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, does that get like an initial attack when you cast it? I can, but I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, so you're so, not attacking with it. No, not this round. Okay, now your turn then. Stay in put where you are. I'm actually going to move slightly up. Okay. There we go. I am done. Okay. And Vega. Okay. Um, can I get into this spot here? Uh, you have to climb on top of one of those uh, crates. And go in the same spot as his spirit weapon. Uh, I'm going to say no. You can't occupy the same space as that. Be like another person. But you're a monk. Of course, you can stand on top of a crate. Yeah. Oh, that is an important thing to point out. Uh, you guys remember when you came down here, there were all kinds of crates marked as alchemist fire. <laughs> Along with, I think you see him on the <laughs> on the map. Everybody got a match. <laughs> a bunch of uh, coffins back on the front end of the ship. Cast fireball would be bad. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pop up onto this crate, and I'm going to burn a key point and uh, stunning, try and stun him. Punch to the nose. Yeah, well, I think I hit him first, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that hits him. Seven points. Oh. And I got to do what kind of a save? Uh, con save. Con save. I got to find it. I... Are you guessing? I'm just double checking. Yep, con save. Saving throw. What's the DC? 15? 15. 15. Oh, look at that shit. Okay, so Teddy is now stunned. Okay. Anything else out of Vega? I'm just going to get back out of the way. Kind of soft and squishy. So okay. That's it. Okay. Enix. Enix. Enix takes a step back. You're on mute or something, Don. I don't hear you if you're talking. Hey, Don. Hello? And now he's on mute. All right, Don, I really need you to show up here. Because Teddy's going next. Been talking this whole time. He just well, right now, in chat. Yeah, I see that. Discord. Well, it showed you you're on mute in Discord a second ago. If you're talking now, we still don't hear you. Okay, type in chat what you're wanting to do then for now, and then maybe pop out and back in on Discord. Just move back. That is all. Okay. Not holding an action to do anything. Okay. All right. Teddy is up next. He is stunned. So when someone is stunned, can they still make saving throws? Incapacity can't move, can barely speak, fail strength and deck save, attackers have advantage. No, it doesn't say anything about that. All right. So, uh, he needs to make a charisma save. Um, would it add to the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Would it add to it if I don't share what he rolls? Or do you guys want to see it? I need to see it. You guys hear me now? Hey, oh, now we're here. Yeah. Sorry, I need to see would it. not come off of mute. So you guys are good with me just rolling this behind the scenes? So you don't know? Yeah. As long as yeah, you're not yeah, making up numbers. Okay. Uh, what's the DC? It was 15, right? Yeah. 
Oh shit, that was for uh, no, I'm talking for I'm talking for the protection from evil and good thing. It's a sixteen. Oh, I don't know what the DC is for uh Oh, that's right, it's for the possession. I gotta look I don't that know up. What the DC is for the possession. That's all you. Okay. All right. Uh Simon, you watch as again, Teddy is stunned, so he's just kind of sitting there wavering a little bit, but you see the glaze look in his eyes kind of disappear. He's got his regular color back in his eyes. And then a ghostly figure, which I didn't have prepared, appears next to him. Where is my dude? Ah, there he is. Okay, and I'll do this out in the open, even though I won't say what it's for. Oh, damn it. I, had, I didn't have it unopened. It was GM rolled. <laughs> okay. And then this guy is going to reach out and touch you, Simon. Does 17 hit you, Simon? That's not even close enough to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about Simon. We're talking about Rand. What's going on here? Oh, yeah. This is, this is Rand. This is Rand in this game. <laughs> okay. My, right. base, my base armor class is 21, and with shield spell, it's 26. Booyah. Okay. And then he's going to back away and through the wall, so you can have opportunity attack if you want, Simon. Yes, please. Oh, and that misses. So I'm going to make him disappear because he went through the wall. Okay. All right. Uh, Simon, it is your turn. Uh, I'm just going to say, Teddy, uh, when you regain your faculties, uh, take a step back, please. Uh, looks like you were. Uh, looks like you were temporarily possessed by something. Now I'm going to take a step back here as well. Okay. And I'm going to hold my action to punch that ghost if he comes anywhere near me. If he's within <laughs> five feet of me. Okay. That's it. Okay. Uh, Arnold. Wow. Um... I still got nothing. Um, I'm going to hold my attack. Like you said, if the ghost makes an appearance, I guess I'll whack the ghost. Or if uh, Teddy makes a uh, an attack move on somebody, I will uh, attack, but bludgeoning damage. Not intent to kill, but the intent to subdue. On Teddy? Yeah. You're saying? Okay. Yeah. Okay, Vega? I'm just going to uh, ready in action if or ghosty ghost come waffle. Okay. Well, Teddy recovered. Okay, NX. Um uh, NX is gonna ask, should we should we attack or what is this thing? He's gonna direct that at the captain. Oh, captain's not there. Sorry. I shouldn't have him down there. Oh. And took us down there to show it, didn't he? He did, but he's not in this battle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we should probably go destroy it, huh? <laughs> he said destroy everything. Okay, is that your turn? That's my turn. Okay, Teddy. So he's stunned. Last time he used his action to to do the save for the possession. So now he's got to do another one to get stunned, he's, right? He's not he's stunned not. anymore. He's stunned until the end of Vegas last turn. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. All right. So Teddy is going to wake up, shrug, ask you guys what you want him to do. When I we talked, he heard that he heard he heard me when I talked. I'm sorry, wasn't, Brian has forgotten what you asked him to do. So wasn't I, deaf. I told him that um, he should take a step back away from the door, that he was possessed by something that's no longer possessing him. Okay. And over here. 
Okay. Uh, one minute to strategize. Go. I think we should. Uh, I think the ghost is in the old lady, and that's his secret weapon. I think we should go upstairs. Unless you guys want to try and taunt it out and fight it. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. Are we supposed to kill it or not? No, we only have a minute to decide, guys. <laughs> but I guess it was possessing people upstairs and shit, so it doesn't really matter where it yeah. is. But I don't know how to get to it through that door. Right, but it's trapped down there. I mean, it's not going to get past us. So let's go upstairs, get direction, and then come back down and kill it if we no, need to. No, no, no. This is no. the same thing that uh, this is the same thing that possessed the dude upstairs. Yeah. Nothing's stopping it. It went through the wall. Yeah. Oh. I don't All know right. that it's possessing the person that's inside there, and I don't believe that this is the secret weapon. I don't think the captain brought us down here to trick us. I think the captain brought us down here to give us whoever is the prison the prisoner is. Did I think we learned who the prisoner was? Didn't we, Brian? Yeah. He told you it was yeah. the Dahlia. The uh, yeah. the daughter of the the king of the Xerxian Empire. Yeah, I think that the uh, I think that the ghost is secondary to that. She's chained up, right? Well, she locked did. in the cabin. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't chained up. She was oh, laying on the floor, apparently unconscious. Because as I recall, you guys shouted out for her, and she didn't answer. And this this is a wall with two chambers, right? Separate rooms. Correct. Okay. And even though you can see on the map, you technically can't see that because she's on the side of the wall. Okay. Technically, you're one minute up. You guys have anything else? Let's do it to it. Okay. Uh, Simon, what you doing on your turn? Um... Ghost summoning spell? I don't know, because we didn't really decide what we were going to do. <laughs> uh, I am going to... I don't know what the range on this thing is. Um, did we see if there's a lock on the outside of that door? Like, is that door even openable? I don't remember from last session if you determined that or not. So I'm going to say you don't know. Uh, well, I'm going to say, Teddy, you're protected right now, just so you know, um, from being re, uh, from, from being repossessed. So, uh, why don't you, uh, on your turn, go up there and, uh, open up the door, uh, because he's still got, uh, evil and good cast on him and he can't be, he can't be possessed with that on him ahead of time. Uh, and I will, um take uh, i'm going to take a, a step just a little step forward here and uh, again hold my action to punch the ghost that's what i'm doing okay okay arnold third verse same as the first yeah i'm gonna keep the hammer next to the door ghost comes out whack the ghost uh be prepared to heal anybody that needs to be healed and or cast sacred flame on the ghost well it's one or the other you can't Hold all those things as your action. All right. Um, well, if it's a ghost, if the ghost comes out, sacred flame. If it's a creature that's possessed, most likely going to use the hammer. Okay. You got to pick one thing as your reaction. You can't okay. have multiple choices. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Sorry. Um, sacred flame if the ghost appears. Okay. All right. Vega. Anything different? Um, Vega's going to pop over here and stand on this crate. And okay. Just ready as punching action ghost. Okay. But Gary, Vega's master, has to run to a washer. Okay. <laughs> All right, Enix, anything different for you? Uh, Enix, as, as uh, Teddy moves up, he's going to move up to, uh, to that position. And then um, he's going to hold his... Uh, Sword burst, cantrip, um, if he can use it. Okay, which so you're, is, writing uh, your, you're writing your sword burst cantrip if you see a ghost, right? Well, it's... Um, 
it, the range is self. So if if it gets up close enough to me, then uh, I'm going to use it. Yes. Okay. So if the ghost gets within five feet of you, you're going to cast it. Yeah. Right. Okay. And yep. You're standing where you are. Or you say you're moving. No, I'm moving as as soon as Teddy moves up. So uh, I'm going to hold my my I'm movement until Teddy goes and take his okay. place. All right. So Teddy will then walk up here and open the door. It is not locked. And you and he see there are no go there's no ghosts in there that you can see. And Teddy will step through. And he's going to reach down and touch the girl. <laughs> uh, do a medicine check. I don't know, guys. She might be dead. And that's his turn. One minute strategize. Where is my... Oh, I didn't put the ghost in here. Hold on a minute. Somewhere in there, he would have gone. I just didn't have him in turn order because I had Teddy at this turn order. So let me do this. And I will retroactively take his turn, which should have happened a long time ago now. All right. So here's what happens. Uh, Vega, you're the first one to see it. Give me a perception roll to see if you're surprised or not. Someone roll for me. Oh, yep, I will. Perception. Hmm. All right, Teddy, you are, you see it, but you're too late to react before it does something else. It pops through the wall right next to you. And everyone else that had their actions held, that's fine. He can do it. But this thing's going to get his thing off before Vega, since he didn't see it coming. That's how I'm going to rule that. And you see the ghost raise up a ghostly hand and then bring it down hard on one of these barrels uh, below himself. As it erupts into alchemist fire. Boom, goes the dynamite. Is that bad? Oh, shit. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so Enix, what does your thing do? Uh, Just a deck save? It, yeah, it's a DC 15 deck save, seven force damage. Um, with my sword burst cantrip. Okay. Force. And that is what kind of damage? Force damage. Okay. All right. So it fails. You see it kind of shimmer in the light. Takes a little bit of force damage. And let me read what this thing is or if it's a save or what. Do I get to punch them or do I got to wait to after? No, you can, but this thing's also exploding. You know what? I'll give you, it doesn't say it, but I'm going to give you guys all a deck save versus some damage when this explodes. 18 hits for nine more points of damage. Okay. I need Enix and Vega make me a deck save. Look at you guys. All right. So you take half of this damage. Um, crap, it doesn't go that high. So I'll do it this way. Ooh. Take 10 points of damage, and you can move five feet to avoid being caught on fire. We all take half? Well, I see a 20 for Vega, and I see a... Oh, I was 17 was for, uh, for Simon. Simon, you're out of the range of it. Enix, you wrote a zero, so you take 20, and you are on fire, Enix. So let me give you a, Is there such a thing as a flame token? I'm sure there is somewhere But I'm just going to give you one of these Okay, Simon Your turn now What do you want to do? 
He's sitting in the middle of the fire? He is. He took some... Wait a minute. Let me double check. Maybe he doesn't take any damage. Oh, yeah. He took a little bit as well. But he's still there. Um, All right. Uh, I am going to take a step over to here. And then I'm going to cast that. Fuck, I have a low for my de- for my attacks. So I tried to thorn whip him, but I missed. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just a ghost. You got to meet it to beat it. Oh, so I got him for ten damage. You just barely got pull, him. Yep, and I pull him ten feet towards me. Pull him ten feet towards you. Is that an opportunity to attack for me? No. When someone gets forced, that doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. Okay. If he willingly moves. I'm still within five feet of you. Right. And I would like to point out that um, Arnold didn't get to take his attack of opportunity, Sacred Flame. Oh, Correct. that's right. Arnold? I was waiting for a break <laughs> in the chat. All right, so Sacred Flame. Oh, I can't click on it here. Uh, abilities? I don't know. Sacred Flame should be right in your character sheet. Yeah, but it's not clickable. Mm-hmm. It's just what? text. Under spell casting, it's just text. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, my gosh. Just shoot me now. Look look under actions. Yeah, it's... There, we try it that way. Um uh, seven's not probably gonna hit. No, a dex. No, seven is a damage. He's gotta make a dex save. Oh, 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 sorry. Uh, dex save. Who? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I think the right. twenty ones. That's a very dexterous ghost. I'm trying to see where is my. All right. So Simon, was there anything left on your turn, or was that it? Uh well, I'm not gonna feel the ghost up. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. The ghost is up. Um, he's going to... Let me read this again. DC 15. Okay. Okay. So here's how I'm going to rule this, because he has this. I'll put it in chat. So it basically is going to disappear into this ethereal plane. Which I'm going to rule does not provoke opportunity attacks. Son of a bitch, where did he go? It's the same as like a uh, misty step. No, we don't see him. Okay. Arnold. Uh, I hold my attack till goes to go. Oh, wait, Enix, did, you took some damage, did you not? I did. So and did he's you. on fire. And you're on fire. All right. Well, let's see. And so is the uh, the floor right there and the stuff around it. The other barrels of of fire. Yes. Right. Let's see here. What you doing, Arnold? I am going to move up here and do cure wounds on Enix. At level one, 11 points. A bandit for you. Suck it up. Okay. All right, that's it for you, Arnold? Yes. Okay, what's Vega doing? You lose you again, Gary? No, no, I'm right here. I'm just trying to figure if there's, if one of these other barrels, the source of water, we maybe try and put out the fire with. Um, there's no 
obvious source of water down here. Uh, let me read the room again. I don't think Yellow Barrel's had water in it, but let me read. Could I remove my cloak and wrap Phoenix with it and put the fire of him out? Oh, shit. There's 10 wooden kegs painted red that contain gunpowder <laughs> and 10 wooden kegs of alchemist fire. I forgot about the gunpowder one. Uh, it says nothing about any kind of water. So what was your question? I'm sorry, I was reading when you asked me a question. Can I remove my robe and wrap Enix with it to put his fire out? Uh, that'll take your action to do that, but yeah, you can do yeah. that. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, give me a athletics or acrobatics check with advantage. Terrible attack. Oh, there you go. <laughs> hey. So, Enix, you are no longer on fire, although you are sitting really relatively close to an open fire. Yep. I'm going to um, continue to move. Five, okay. 25, 30, 35, 40, and I'm going to wait at the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> okay. All right, Enix. Uh, Enix is going to move out and. Uh, Help protect uh, Simon and Arnold's um, sides that they're not looking. So I'm hoping we're going to circle up and wait for the ghost to pop back up. And uh, I'll have my um, sword cantrip ready again. Okay. All right. Teddy is going to pick up the unconscious lady and step back out with her in his arms. All right, guys, what are we doing? Put out that fire, will ya? I don't think he can get around you guys. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's we... got her in his arms, basically. Sorry, I didn't mean to move the hammer. And I'll say he stops right there. You guys good with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, one minute stride, guys. But I want yeah. everyone here to give me a wisdom check. Ooh, nailed it. I said the rest of you probably don't need to roll because I imagine he's going to yell with his revelation. Oh, that Vega also realizes, and Simon ended up a clue. If you guys don't put this fire out soon, it's going to ignite all these other barrels, and yeah. this is going to be uh, a pretty bad situation. And how do you put... From a meta perspective, Brian, I don't think that we know what to do, what we can do for to put this fire out. Yeah, I was going to expand upon that, especially with uh, uh, not rich with uh, Arnold's great wisdom check. Uh, if you use some kind of like a blanket or like what uh, Vega did with a cloak or something to kind of tamp down the fire, uh, that will help. Now, it's on the bed. this is a little bit of meta knowledge, but if you're doing a person, one action to do that would pretty much put it out. With something like this, where it's an active alchemist fire, it's going to probably take several rounds to put it out. Hmm. Okay. What about, so, what about yeah. You basically got to smother this fire. Think of it like a, uh, a grease fire. If you put water on it, it's just going to make it worse. What about oh, monk urine with work then? <laughs> That'll make it worse, definitely. Sure. With all of Gary's character, it'll just make a big flame. <laughs> <laughs> all all right. content. Any other questions on that? Are there any casts on here that are labeled like water? No, nope. they asked that a while ago. No. There's gunpowder and alchemist fire. That's what's down here. Yeah. And a bunch of uh, coffins at the uh, front end of the ship. I think we all just, whatever blankets we can find, I'll use my cloak start whopping on this fire trying to put it out yep i'll come back and do that from this side you guys do it from the other side are there uh any blank are there blankets, blankets on, on the, the beds bed? in the cell uh teddy would would shout that out yeah back in the brig where zadalia was yeah there were a couple beds in there with blankets okay i'll run in and grab them let me throw the old lady on the fire she'll probably put it out <laughs> so i'll grab the, all the blankets that are in the cell and then 
whoever's closest when they come out the door, I'll toss one to them. So either Simon or Enix. Quick, okay. put the fire out. Okay, anything else from a strategy standpoint, guys? No. Okay, Simon. Well, I'll... well Arnold's going to eat. Okay. <clears throat> I just assumed that Arnold was already getting some uh, getting some bedding. So I am going to run into the room, grab some bedding, do, 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 and I am going to, so that was 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm going to just sort of uh, throw some at the feet of Arnold and or Annex, and then I'm going to use some of the bedding for myself to start to push out the fire. Fire! Oh, so you're saying you grab two of them and drop one at their feet. Okay, I'm with you. I grabbed multiple as much as I could, kept one in my hand and dropped the rest at their feet, just dropped it. So I didn't take my action to, to give it to them. And then I'm and then I'm gonna start putting the fire out. Yeah, and I'll rule you say you got two of them. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, general athletics or acrobatics, so see how well you do putting out the fire. Well, I'm gonna do really badly at that. <laughs> You say that's like a reverse psychology thing, right? Well, I got minus one for both. Oh, well, there we go. Hey, look at there you. you Ooh, yeah. right. So let me go in and just shrink the fire a little bit to represent how it is now a little bit smaller. Ooh, not the map, Brian. Don't move the map. I'm going to move this little dude a little smaller. There we go. Okay. Set up for Simon. I can't steal from the fire. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Okay, so I next up. Steal the oxygen. Next up. Hold, please. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Simon, since you just put the fire out, roll me a d20. Don't roll bad. Okay. All right. You can see the flames kind of flickering, licking at the other crates next to it, marked with gunpowder and alchemist fire, but nothing else has caught fire as of yet. Okay. Arnold. Okay. So the fire is effectively out, or do I need to take anti fire methods here? The fire is just smaller, it is still okay. flaming. So I will take the blanket that was tossed to me, and I will also. Uh, Start pounding it out. Okay. Smother. Love is like oxygen. Deny it, love. Athletics or um, acrobatics. Let's see how uh, well you let's do. See. Ew. Okay. Uh, athletics is strength. Correct. So, if you don't, I if you don't have the skill, yeah, you just roll strength. I, just, yep. I guess I just roll strength check then. I don't see the skill listed here. So we'll just Damn. All right. The fire Ooh. shrinks a little bit more, but it is still burning. You think that probably one more like this, and you might be able to put the fire out, assuming it doesn't spread. Quick, okay. we are doing good. Okay. Uh, where did, uh, Vega. Vega's running in and wumps his cloak down on the fire. Uh, you put your cloak around Teddy. I took it with me. I didn't leave it on him. Well, you had to put it on him to kind of tamp, at, tamp oh. it out. You got to find some other source. Not Teddy, was, uh, who was on fire. Was Enix. Enix, thank you. Yeah, but I just used it to put the fire out. I I'm going to... You got to get another source. Ah, oh, shit. How many blankets uh, did he grab? I thought he grabbed two. a bunch and pulled them out. Yeah, two. I'm going to come here, rip it off him, and come back? <laughs> rip it off. Go rip the cloak off of of it. Got a crap load of movement, Gary. Just go into the room, grab some freaking stuff, and then come back out. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna grab another blanket. <laughs> 40, okay. 50, 60 <laughs> of my 65 movement. And then I'm gonna womp fire out. Okay. Probably no need for you to roll this, but go ahead. Athletics or acrobatics? Yeah. Okay. And you effectively have put the fire out. So let me go here. I'm gonna I got to lift this in charge. 
me my fucking cloak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Enix, anything you want to do now? Um, it's all put out, correct? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Just uh, smoldering at this point, but no, no open flames are left. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to move over here and watch for the ghost to come back. After giving um, Vegas. I'll have my, my um, sword cantrip ready to go. Okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the flame back in there and mark it black just to kind of represent what's charred to see how that looks. Well, it doesn't look black at all, does it? Nope. Okay. Well, that's not open flame. That's uh, charred. Okay. And next you said you're doing what? Holding an action to do what? Uh, my um, sword cantrip if uh, uh, that okay. ghost pops up and oh. I can hit it. Okay. Teddy. Oh, that's me. Um. You guys want Teddy to start bringing her upstairs? You want him to stay put? I think start taking her upstairs. Okay. Yeah. Five, ten. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Uh, difficult terrain to carry something, I'll say. I'll have him roll athletics. See how well he does. No, he rode really good. 25, 30. He can get there right there. Carrying her. Okay, that's Teddy's turn. One minute strategize if you want. Go. Is there any way to neutralize this these fire casts? Neutralize them? Yeah, is there anything we can do to neutralize them so that if he smashes another one, it's not going to go off? Uh, you wrap tell me. Them in the, wrap them in the blankets, guys. So um, if we wrap them with the blankets, if he smashes them, hence, there should be no oxygen. Or at least make it harder. Is do we have enough blankets to to go around? I don't know. Just and there were over. ten alchemist fire, and there were ten that were gunpowder. Oh, okay. I, only well, I don't play with gunpowder in my game. I'll say they're all alchemist fire. Yeah. So twenty okay. things of alchemist fire. And we've got like five or six blankets. We could probably do it, huh? I said you got a total of maybe three more in the brig. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, stack all that stuff up together and wrap the blankets around them. Yeah, let's put all of the alchemist fire in one big pile. (laughs) I think put two blanket. Put a blanket over these these two. A blanket over these two. Move little one over here and put a blanket over these two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now that also means if he does manage to make it ignited, we have nothing to put it out. So, but consider that. But that's what I would. That's what I suggest. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Well, it's the best best plan I've heard. So yeah, let's do it. Good. Head back upstairs. Okay. We're all good? Yeah. Okay. Simon. Uh, Simon is just going to watch while these guys do their thing and uh, and um, go over to, I assume that all of these, assume that all of these um, Alchemist Fire dealies are all right here. Is that right? Uh, there's 20 of them, so I was going to say it's probably those crates in the barrels on both sides there. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to stand here hoping that the ghost comes over to my side to smash a barrel while I, when, it's, when it's his turn, and I will smack him um, cool. if that's the case. Okay. That's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so for my purposes, combat is over. So let's just wrap this up with what you guys are planning on doing, if I understand you correctly. So you're going to pull all the blankets out, try to cover up all the alchemist fire, correct? That's your plan? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll say that probably takes you a couple minutes to cover them all up uh, with what blankets you can find. 
Um, eventually, someone will maybe have the epiphany that if you go open up one of these uh, coffins, you'll see there's dirt inside there. You can use the dirt to kind of cover up some of the pieces of alchemist fire crates and stuff, if you think that'll help. But uh, the ghost does not make its presence uh, heard of or seen again. As far as you know. Okay, so we're out of combat. You guys going to head back up top? What do you guys want to do with Zadalia? How you want to handle this? Because she is still unconscious. I only went downstairs to meet her. So if uh, Teddy's taking her upstairs, then I think we should all go upstairs. Okay. Agreed. Going up to the top deck. Okay, I'll grab Teddy and Zadalia, move her up top. Are any of you guys going to try to revive her? I think technically Teddy is a paladin. He could lay on hands, I believe, if you guys are ready for that. Yeah, I can uh, do a medicine check on her first to see, you know, if, what her situation is, if it's just wounds that need to be healed or if she has some kind of uh, elder ailment or poison. I see. Basically, I won't make you do a medicine check, but it looks like she's got a pretty good knot on the side of her head, like she got knocked out somehow. Okay. So I can either roll like a 1d4 and she wakes up in that amount of time frame, or one of you guys can use something to try to... Um, I think Teddy could Teddy could use one of his, just one of his, um, of his lay out of hands points for her. Okay. All right, so if you guys are coming upstairs, move up to this uh, top deck over here where I moved Teddy two and we will go through some introductions here as she wakes up get a cold compress you know pat her face <laughs> and her forehead it's okay you're all safe now so she basically tells you and then Grimzad will uh, basically corroborate her story that she was in the brig more so for uh, her own protection than what you guys may have thought was you know, protection from her uh, ever since she was liberated from her ship by uh, Grimzod. Uh, she's been kind of held down on that brig trying to figure out how she can get back in the good graces of her father. Uh, she tells you basically that her brother, let me go find this. I don't butcher this. Her evil twin, Zeleth, X-E-L-E-T-H, um, orchestrated the attacks on the character's world in accordance with the dying wish of their father, Emperor Zavan, X-A-V-A-N. And she tells you that if you guys can help her regain her status as the rightful empress to the Zerixian Empire, she vows to help you guys save your world. Uh, do she says, we both want the same thing, revenge. As my father lies on his deathbed, my scheming brother, Zealoth, denies me my birthright. He seized control of my father's navy, banished me from court, and left me in the clutches of his psychophants. Psych, psych, psychoph Holy crap, I can't say the word. I'll type it. Psychophant. Yes, that word. It's sycophant. Sycophant. So sycophant. <laughs> <laughs> I like sicko pants. Uh, that too. Uh, he orchestrated the attack on your world, bombarding it with actual seeds, harvesting from Xerixus, our dying star. Once the crystalline vines have drained all the energy from your world, they will discharge that energy in a beam of light back to Xerixus, our star, and replenish it. So Zeleth instructed his minions to deposit me on your world so that I died. So as I died, my energy would, could contribute in some small way to the light of Xerixus. Fortunately for me, my ship was disabled and boarded by these vampires and, and Grimzod here. They help, help me become Empress again, and I will undo the damage Zeleth has already caused your world. So you can now have... Can I check to see if she's full of shit or not? You can certainly try. No. Sight? Yeah, insight. That's fine. Ooh. 
Pretty nice. Ooh, ah, let me see how I want to do this. Um, well, I can't roll it out in the open because then you know if I'm persuading or if I'm deceiving, right? So let me do. No, you could roll it in the open. Just roll a d20 and add the thing or to it. Yeah, but he's Just... doing the inside, not you guys. No, but what I'm saying, what? Oh, I see. What? Yeah. Well, you're just saying if I roll, should I roll a persuasion or, or a, um, or a deception? Yeah. But you could just roll a d20 and not make it a persuasion or a deception. But you know what it is. Yep. I'm going to whisper this to Vega. I'm going to whisper the roll. Don't say anything, Gary. Then I'll respond out loud uh, with what my answer is. As long as I do this correctly. I'll respond about how I feel. Let's see if this works. Did you see it? Yeah. Oh, but that didn't work, did it? No. Let me try that again. Uh, can you whisper still slash R? How do you whisper a roll? Slash W, Vega. Wow, I've been so long since I've done this. And then it's R, D20? All right. Worst that can happen. And it just says nope. RD20. Yeah. <laughs> Forward slash roll and then D. Whatever. Roll a, roll a plastic die on your table. Okay. And then just whisper me the number. Okay. Uh, whisper Vega. <clears throat> All right, you see that number, right, Vega? I do. And you're inciting about whether or not everything she said was true. Okay, so I've got to read to see how much of this, I mean, what might not have been or what could have been all the truth. <laughs> uh, I love it. I have to step away for like two minutes. I'll be right back. All right. So she shared a whole lot. I don't know if one roll is enough to answer everything for you. So I'll say one, two, three, four. There are five different things that she brought up there. So you feel like she's pretty truthful about what she says about her father? As far as uh, exiling her. Uh, she, you feel that she is pretty truthful about uh, what she says about how she can help save your world. What she say about it? You oh, if you help her, if you help her become empress again, she'll uh, make sure that your world is not um, deplenished of its energy. Okay, what else did she say in here? And her brother's neck. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll give you three. That'll be a third one. Yeah, you believe that? Yeah, you know, her brother. What she says about her brother being a dick is is she's being truthful about it. That her brother's the one that set her on this, basically not suicide, but try to deposit her on the earth so she would die along with the planet. Okay, Vegas that's what you believe, Vegas, Gary. And Vegas going to look at her and go. You know, I feel I feel she's being truthful. Most, how can we how can we get to your brother and, and end his life? Can I do an insight on Vega to see if he's being truthful about her being truthful? <laughs> <laughs> wow, are you being serious, or is that kind of like a joking thing on the side? No, I he's an idiot. <laughs> what? There you go. I want to know. <laughs> you want to know if uh, Vega is an idiot or not? I'm sorry, not Vega. No, I already know that. I want to know if he's being truthful about what uh, about whether she's being truthful. Oh, wow. okay. Uh, Do you think so, he's lying? Well, I didn't get to see what she what 
what she wrote to him. So I don't know if uh, they got something going. They could be having little secret conversations. Maybe but, she possessed him. Yeah. Maybe she promised to show me her booby. <laughs> and he'll do a lot. For, he'll do almost anything for that. Vega will do anything for boobies. Oh, I wasn't talking about Vega, but yeah, Vega oh. too. <laughs> oh, so Gary, yeah. if you want to whisper to me a <laughs> I do persuasion or deception, then I will answer <laughs> Rob's insight on you. <laughs> So you click on two GM on your character sheet and then do a... I did. I did. And it's okay. yellow? Uh, that's, that's the wrong thing. Um, oh, they could do... Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll use your roll, but roll the right thing. Persuasion or deception. Okay. In skills, right? Yeah. You, you see what you rolled? You rolled the wrong thing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so your first roll was that. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so how do I want to do this? You're trying to insight, Rob, whether Vega is lying or if he believes what she's saying. I want to know if he's being truthful about believing what she said. Okay. <laughs> this is weird. I'm going to say, based on these rolls... Um, you are fairly certain. No, that... don't tell me. No, no, don't tell me. Whisper it to me. Oh, okay. Wow, we're going deep, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Whisper to down the rabbit hole. Hey, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone else is not whispering. It's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> uh, um... Just because of our personal relationship, Rob. <laughs> My character hardly knows your character. Okay. I'm thinking outside the game, actually. <laughs> How's that for an answer, Simon? So I'm going to say, I'm going to look at the group and I'm going to shrug and I'm going to look at Vega and say, why are you lying to us? <laughs> and Vega's going to look and he goes, I'm not sure what your problem is, but I am not lying. I'm being okay, we're going to, we're going to have to have a discussion about this, uh, at the park after school. Jordan Park, specifically. Jordan Park. I'm in. Kick your ass. Okay. So I'm going to indicate to him that I'm going to have to have a little chat with him later, and then we can just carry on here. Okay, anybody else have any questions or anything for the group? Or Anybody else want to not trust me? <laughs> How can you not trust a monk? A man of God, sort of. <laughs> Doesn't mean you're a monk. I walk the earth doing good deeds. <laughs> helping the needy. You're not the guy from Kung Fu. He totally is. That's how I live my life in real life. <laughs> that I know is fake. That I don't even need to insight. Fake news? All right, so if there's no more discussion between you guys and Zadalia or anybody else, um, well, I you got to... Just... I asked her a question she hasn't answered. What well, was the question? I, I apologize. How do we get to your brother? Where's the my... weaknesses? How do we get to him to take him out? Since getting to my brother, I don't... And she looks at the ship that we're standing on. Well, I'm definitely not getting there on this thing. We need more, uh, we need a little bit, something a little bit more firepower than what this has got, or something more devious. I, I don't have a plan how to get to my brother. Seems to be full of uh, problems, not solutions, lady. <laughs> All right, so there's going to be more that she shares. Yes. Go ahead. So just a couple uh, what's the word look a couple things to decide here. So you guys have two ships right now. You have the last breath, which is damaged badly, uh, moves at half speed right now. Uh, meta knowledge it has 90 of 400 hit points. 
So if you want this thing to move at its normal speed, you've got to repair it somehow up to like 200 hit points. And there's a whole section here about how it gets repaired using mending and other tasks like that. Or you guys can all get back on top of the crap. What the hell is the ship called? That's minnow. Uh, uh, oh, it's, it's called the living tree. That's what he calls it. The living tree is what uh, Commander Crux's uh, ship is called. And you guys can all try to um, head towards where Commander Crux was kind of get trying to get you guys to to find his uh, former, I guess, uh, military compadre that was trying to build up a coalition in Doom Space. You guys remember that portion of the story? Yep. So just need to decide if you want to take a few days to repair this ship uh, to where it's serviceable and can keep up with the living tree ship, or if you guys want to abandon it and head out on uh, Commander Crux's ship. Where's Commander Crux? He's on his ship. Remember, you guys were on his yeah. ship when this one came up to it, and that's when you guys leapt onto this one and tried to get away. This is basically Grimzod's ship right now. Is there any weaponry we can transfer from this ship to the other ship to make it more formidable? It does have at least two ballistae mm -hmm. on the upper deck of this ship. Um, the question is going to be whether you have room on the living tree to actually mount them and be effective with it. But yeah, you can take it with it. It does have an operational spell jamming helm on this ship as well. Which we would uh, probably take with us if we were going to uh, go back over to the other ship. Yeah. And any charts and maps he has? Yeah, Grimzod is going to kind of like grumble at the suggestion that he doesn't want to give up his ship. This is his uh, former flagship of the fleet. Um, knows it you know, like the back of his hand. Uh, to the point where he'll say, okay, if we're going to abandon my ship, then I need assurances that um, if and when we uh, conquer another ship, that it will be mine. Oh, absolutely. No <laughs> ifs, ands, or buts. Not even a question. I know no one else fucking trusts me, but, you know, that's my <laughs> word. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, your word, no offense, doesn't mean anything. I need it from the captain of your ship. Okay. Captain to Vegas, captain. Vegas going to walk behind the captain so he can't see me and kind of like grab his junk and shake it at him like a big fuck you <laughs> and then go sit over here and sulk. You watch his grim's head playing. turns around like exorcist <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> oh, suck Is it. that really necessary? <laughs> oh suck it pirate boy. And he's going to go sit down and pout. So, are you guys in agreement that you're going to try to talk Grimzod out of basically uh, selling his ship, taking what uh, you can from it, and going back on living ship? Or you want to try to repair this thing over the well, course? Well, you of know, Grimzod is more than welcome after we've uh, scuttled this ship to uh, stay on it if he wants. Yeah, but should we take it anyways? Because do we? Well, it moves at half. It moves at half speed. We'd have to repair it for a couple of days just to get it so that it would move at regular at normal speed. Right. Well, can't we go underway and repair it in route? And as we make the repairs, we'll just increase our speed as we go. That's what that way we're still do. moving. You yeah, can't repair it while it's still moving. It basically oh, has to be like birthed, so to speak, where it's not oh. moving when we make the repair. Oh, and it, okay. it leaves us in it leaves us in space at uh with more chances to roll bad D20 rolls for random encounters. Hmm. I think it's. I have a gone. bad feeling about leaving equipment behind, especially a whole ship. Yeah, but that's why we're going to take the. They're going to take the expensive parts from it, and like then the we're gonna spell jammer helm and fire. stuff like that. Mm. We're going to scuttle the ship. It's not going to be a ship for someone else to take. No, no, I get that. I get that. Blow the alchemist fire too. Yeah. As soon as we leave, a Jawa ship is going to come and strip it to its bones. Mm. Okay. I mean, it's it's up to you, Rich. I mean, I have no problem doing it. It just 
No, 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 no. I'm just a little I, bit more. There's a little bit more battles to be had, but never let it be said that uh, any of us were afraid of uh, fighting yeah. stuff. No, I mean, no, it's, I'm I'm not the decision maker. I'm just I'm playing devil's advocate. It's. Uh, I think it would be kind of cool though to see if we can repair it. Stick around and for two days. Would have one, especially for going up against some uh, sicko pant friends. We might need more than one ship, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm not a Grim, sailor. I'm a, I'm a healer. So. Grimm's Odd will throw out there another suggestion. You said if you guys want, we can uh, latch the ship down somewhere close in an asteroid field where we feel fairly safe. It'll be sitting there. We still take the risk of someone else finding it, but we can leave it still intact but in a nearby asteroid field. And if and when we had the time to really spend to come back and fix it, we can always come back later. Yeah. And it's his ship, so. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. He would prefer that to you guys <laughs> basically blowing it up. Okay. Okay. Well, grab the weapons, grab the helm, take everything of value, and let's park it inside the holes on an asteroid, which is actually the innards of the big giant snake thing. Right. Okay. That was Empire. Sorry. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. As long as you don't shoot at it, it won't eat you. That's right. So he's okay with that? He doesn't need any convincing or anything? Grimzod? Yeah. If you're, not going, if you're not going to destroy it, then he's okay with leaving it parked in the asteroid field and come back for it later. Okay. That's what we'll do then. All right. So put this in the party loop just so I don't forget it. So you're taking two... Uh, ballistae that he has on the ship. John, you got that? Me? Yeah. In the loot in the loot bag? Oh. No, I missed it. I'm sorry. What is so it? You, got, you got two extra ballistae. And once we get back on the other ship, I'll look to see if uh, how feasible it is to have two more actually at the ready or if they're gonna be like just backups in case something happens to your other ones. Um you're also gonna have a spell jamming helm. Are you guys taking any of the alchemist fire with you? Are you going to leave it all on the ship? I think explosive Ooh. fire is a bad idea on a ship. Only if there's a ghost. So let me do this as a... Just a... So you guys are aware of what this stuff does. Show to players. So that's what a keg of alchemist fire does if you want to take that with you. But to Rob's point, you run the risk of if this thing blows up on your ship, um, that is not marked on this. But if there are multiple in there, it's going to make a big boom, boom. Oh, they're all together. Yeah, we should take... <clears throat> let's take one. Well, let's take... I mean, how many blankets to... We we can take the blankets too. So let's just if they're safe, we might as well take. Um, you know, at least you said there were ten of them. One burnt. Twenty. There are twelve twenty on the ship. Okay. Technically, it was ten gunpowder, but I said I don't do gunpowder in my game, so it's yeah. all twenty alchemist fire. Okay, so I say we take half of them because that's that's great um, artillery shot. You know, we mm -hmm. can, if we get in a fight, we can use that. But let's make sure it's safe. So let's keep it um, wrapped up. So when it says a keg of Ackman's fire lobbed at a creature, you're going to need something like a yeah, lobber. Yeah, we don't have. You're going to need a lobber. What's a don't we have a tree that th throws rocks? Ooh, I didn't think about that. But yeah. <laughs> Your mom throws rocks. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll rule that the tree can throw these. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, let's handy. take let's take a few of them at least because and dang, you know that, that if the tree hunt takes any of this damage, it's gonna be double damage on him, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you got that to potentially contend with. Okay, so let's say we uh, yeah, we prep by you know having kegs of water out there as well so we water's not going to help you you know that from the wisdom oh, check. Yeah, that's check, right. like a grease fire kegs of dirt. if so we have kegs of water we can put the blankets in the kegs of water so they're soaked 
Who has a big keg of salt? <laughs> Baking soda. Well, I'm saying oh, if we soak the blankets in water, then it'll be easier for them to smother the fire. The kegs of dirt that we thought were dirt are actually gunpowder because we don't know what gunpowder is. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually what that was, Gary, was the vampire crew coffins that had dirt in them. Vampire? <laughs> Vampirates. Yeah, well, we don't have to keep them right next to the tree. We can keep them away from the tree. Well, you got to keep them next to the tree if you want him to throw them. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> just bring them up one at a time or whatever we no. need to do. No. Especially for that first shot. We put them on deck. We spread them out. And we you guys make my you guys make my heart sad, just oh, so that you know. know. We're making so you know. too hard. <laughs> Let's take ten. Put them on the deck near the tree so he can toss them. So let's do this. Get everybody. Make sure you're on the deck right here. Let me grab you, and we'll put you back on the living tree map. If you guys are going to park this one next to an asteroid somewhere, I'm cool with that. Okay. Actually, I think you guys all might already be on the other map. Back on the living tree. Let me check. Living tree, living tree. Hopefully this is the right map. Okay, I think everybody's here except for... No, Arnold's there too. All right, everybody's there, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, let me now look how I want to do the ballistae. One there, one there. Perfect. Because you've got one up here that the three Hadazi shipmates are, yeah. I guess, were manning. Um, let me see if I think I've got them in here. I can drag and drop them to see how big they are. But how many of those uh, Aquamist fires were you guys going to take? I said 10. I suggested 10. I agree with 10. Okay, yep, I'll say you can put two of them up here. Right about here. I'll turn that one 45 degrees. Okay, so basically with two of them on here, you can't point them forward because they'll hit each other. So at this 45 degree and also basically um, we do like this. So you can shoot like, you know, this direction or that direction or that direction. But you can't go forward because then they'll basically hit each other. There's not enough room for both of them to be pointing in that direction. You guys with me? Yeah. Yeah. We're bagging okay. with your mowing. Okay. And how many Aquamus fires did you say you're taking? I'm sorry. I'm going to drop them on here. That's why I'm asking. Ten. Ten of them. And where are you going to put them all? Uh, uh, we're going to scatter them, aren't we? I don't think that'll help us. We need to buy the tree so the tree can <laughs> I don't think them. keeping them all together would be a good idea either. We should uh, spread them out a little bit. Yeah. Hey, figure it out then. <clears throat> yeah, start pinging where you want them. I'm copying this one and putting it in different places. Yeah. Just away from the tree. Them. So if they happen to get hit... I'll ping for me where you want them, and I'll start yeah, dropping them. Get on, Ten of them. Get on it, Don. Okay. Uh, let's put a couple in the hold. Down below. Okay. Yeah. And if we do two in each, then we could probably just, you know, set double them up, and then we've got – we just got to find one more spot. Are you keeping one up here by the tree? Am I getting rid of that there. one? How about there? One in there and one there. And then they're so by the get... tree, so the tree can grab them and shoot. Okay. Okay, where's the last one going? I didn't see if you pinged. Right there. Oh, very top. Okay. All right, that's 10 of them. Yeah. You guys good with all those spots? Sure. 
Okay, I'm going to drop on the map layer so I don't confuse myself later. And map layer. Okay, spell jamming helm. Where do you want to put that? In, in the bridge with the other one, or is that something we store somewhere, guys? I don't know. I think that's probably the safest place for it. I didn't see a ping if you picked a spot. Oh, we sit on the bridge with the other one. Uh, Phil Ardra is sitting in that one, so you put in the same room. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me drop. Oh, look, that's a good looking throne. I like that. It's purple. <laughs> Okay, that's on the map layer. Okay. Other than that, um, you guys would learn eventually that the vampires, although they don't need to eat, they would keep food and ale and everything on their ship just to kind of keep up their, their former, you know, undead life style, but they don't need it for sustenance. So most of it was like rotten or stale. So not exactly the best. It could keep you alive, but not exactly something you'd probably want to keep unless you guys like that kind of stuff. Tastes like shit that you can live off of. <laughs> yeah. Like the like the old Western stuff with that tack stuff. It's got eating leather. The Croc okay. Dundee ran for reference, but all right, guys all back in living ship. Commander Crux is gonna give you a little more detail about where you're heading next. Um He's not crazy about the Dahlia because she is a Rixian, but after healing her tail, how she wants to work with you guys to basically take down the Xerixian Empire. And thanks to Vegas, yeah, she's telling the truth story. Um, he reluctantly agrees. Um, but Crux tells you that we still got to make our way to Doom Space. Uh, that's your best shot of actually getting some kind of an armada to take on the Xerixian Empire. That's where his old uh, war buddy, Warwick, uh, was last uh, known to be trying to pull together a coalition in that area. Um, during, he says, probably about a th uh, what's said in there, three to five days of travel to reach Doom Space. And once you get into Doom Space, that's when he'll use the Wild Space Ori that he got from Topola, the wizard, to basically locate the moon uh, that Warwick was last known to be on. Uh, during the travels, Crux told you he last spoke with Warwick a few months ago uh, while he was on the moon of Arun. Um, but he also, during some night, maybe he's had a little bit too much to drink, tells you that he lost his sending stone uh, that he was using to communicate with Warwick in a gambling debt uh, back on the Rock of Brawl. So that's why it's been a few months since he spoke uh, with Warwick. But... That's where he wants to head to. Okay. A little bit more comes out of Zadalia. You guys are traveling. Let's see here. She tells you that both her and her brother Zelith were meant to share the throne upon the death of their father, Emperor Zaven. But uh, her, brother's, uh, her brother decided that she was not worthy of the throne. And Basically, befell her what you guys have come across here. The whole weaker, the weaker sex. Uh, no, she just said he's got uh, power hungry and he was uh, put over the Navy. So he had more power and influence than she would like for him to have. And when her, her father became ill, he took advantage of that power and basically figured out a way to take her out of the picture. Um, she tells you that the funeral for her father. Uh, when she left, was still in the final stages. Her father was planning to his ascension to godhood. And his dying wish was that he become one with the light of Xerixus, their star. When the star is at its brightest, that wish prompted Zillus' attack on the character's world, which began once that, uh, that process is done, it's going to drain all the energy from that world and shoot it back into their star, Xerixus. And that will correlate with her uh, father's ascension. To godhood. I uh, think sure I told you this. The only way to save your world is to destroy Xerixus, the star at the heart of Xerixus' space. 
She said, if the star dies, the crystal vines on your world will die as well. Uh, she tells you that a member of the imperial family can destroy Xerixius by performing a ritual at the astral font in the Temple of Light, which is located in the imperial fortress. And she tells you, yeah, should be. The Imperial Fortress will orbit Xerixius until Emperor Zavin ascends to godhood, after which the fortress will return to the Astral Sea. Okay, that's what she shares. Any other questions you may ask her or Commander Crux that I can answer? Okay, I'll what? take that as a no. Sorry, go ahead. You're going to say something? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I just now saw Rob's uh, thing in chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in favor of the Alchemist fire. <laughs> ah, what do you got to worry about? Nothing bad will happen, right? Right. Nothing bad ever happens in these games. Okay, you guys are going. Oh, what Crux knows. I shared all that with you. Colors of wild space, girl more muted, fading into a deepening silver haze. Soon your ship is immersed in the starry silver clouds of the astral sea. All right, so here's where they have an opportunity of bonding with the crew and some miscellaneous things you can do while you travel for three to five days. So if you haven't already, um, you guys can uh, finish a long rest. So get all your hit points back. Uh, whatever else you get back after a long rest, you guys can pop all yourselves off. Because like I said, it's a three to five journey through the astral sea to reach doom space. Okay. So bonding with the crew, Grimzod has a gambling game called Dead Man's Dice. If you guys would like to play, I can share the news with you. Or if you're not interested, I can move on. You guys tell me. Oh, I'll play some dice. Okay. Everyone has money, right? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Clarence made lots of money. It says each player chooses any number of D6s and shakes them in a cup. Everyone rolls and reveals their dice at the same time. The player with the highest total wins, but anyone who rolls a one automatically loses. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a limit. I'm going to say five D6s is the most you can roll. Um, Again, when you roll, the high, one of the highest number wins the bet. But if you roll a one on any of them, you lose. Highest total, but if any of those dice is a one, you lose. Got it. Right, right. So I guess Grimzod's going to pony up to this one as well. Okay, what's the bet, guys? Uh, he says the buy-in is five gold pieces per game, unless you guys are feeling lucky and want to up the ante. Five gold pieces. Good one. I think it's a good start. Ready to roll. Okay. So I'll say that uh, both Crux and uh, Grimzod. Nah, Crux is not going to gamble with Grimzod. He hates Grimzod. So Grimzod's going to gamble and flinch. Uh, the first mate. Where's flinch? Right here. They're all going to gamble. So you can win 10 of their money. 10 gold pieces. Okay. So who wants to go first? On your roll, you can choose up to D five D6s. I'll go first. Um, I lost. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and have Flinch go next. He's only going to roll three. Ah, damn it. Take it off GM roll, Brian. Watch. Now I'll probably lose. Hey, I didn't lose. I got a 10 for Flinch. Anyone else gambling? Enix is out. Enix doesn't want to gamble? Nope. Oh, roll a one. Hey, Stop. all right. So far, Flinch <laughs> group sounds going to win. Anybody else? I guess technically you should commit before all the dice are rolled, but regardless. Nobody else? Nope. All right. So I'll have Grimzai do 3d6s as well. Oh, it's a tie. It's a roll off. Oh, shit. Uh, three for Flinch. He loses. And then one for Grimzod, since he's the only one left. 
Hey, Grimms, I just took all your money. Everyone that gambled loses five gold pieces. Okay. What that again. fun? Try it again. <laughs> Go. Want to win my money back? Okay. Who all's in? Let's do that that way first. I mean, ask who's in and how many dice they're going to roll before they roll. Because if everybody had rolled a one, I would have been in and I would have rolled one die. Yep, that is true. I don't want to do this. Okay, so whisper them to me. That way nobody else knows how many dice you rolled. I will whisper mine to whoever's out. Whoever's not gambling. Is anybody here not gambling? Enix is out. I'm out okay. too. Okay, so I'm going to whisper. Shit, how am I going to do this? I'm I'm going to do mine last. I already know what I'm going to roll. If you guys are good with it. Well, you I'm going to roll, yeah, I'm that's gonna roll good, 3D6. That's a good idea. I'm gonna roll both of them are gonna roll three three D6s again. All right. So you guys go ahead and whisper yours to me first. Whatever you're rolling. I did. Okay. Ooh, Holy yeah. shit. Okay, nice so roll. if I roll nice roll, Gar. If I roll three D sixes, I can't even beat that. All right. Uh wait a minute. Vega, you rolled to me twice. No. You whispered one to me. Do you not see that? Yeah, I whispered that I was going to roll five dice, and I rolled five That's dice. what that meant. I thought that was your roll. I'm like, holy no. shit, you rolled horrible. <laughs> no, I said I was going to roll five dice. Okay. All right, so you win 20 gold pieces, Gary. Right. Well, 15. Yeah, get your five back. All right, you guys done gambling? Nope. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> That's That's a good one. Run. <laughs> All right, one more round? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my number this time. Uh with my guys are rolling. Uh okay, I got it in my head. Okay. Roll away. Ding! Look at you. All right. Flinch was gonna do five this time. Ah, oh, damn it. And then and Grim's I was going to do four. Um, he loses as well. Look, well, Gary, got 15 more. I'm on a hot street. Let's keep we, going. We could do this all night. I want to make sure the others are okay if you want to keep going. Let's do one more. You guys okay with that? One more? Good. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. I know what they're going to roll. Double. Oh, Gary finally loses. You going again? Uh oh. Uh oh. Here we go for oh. Flinch. Ah, oh, and here we go for Grimzod. Hey, oh, you rolled a one. <laughs> Damn it. There you go, Rich. Uh -huh. You got 15 gold pieces. Yay, I made my losses back. I'm back at zero. Good to go. Okay, so there's some other bonding thing. Uh, there's a thing in the book about astral fishing. Topla can make you guys fishing poles if you'd like to go fishing. You guys interested in fishing? fishing? I'd go fishing. <laughs> okay. Uh, astral Adventures Guide, page 21. Oh, I thought you said asshole fishing. <laughs> <laughs> asshole, ace, asshole, anal, something like that. Okay, how does this work? Hey, ain't no fishers. Just go for that now. I'm going to try fishing. Ah, to, to go fishing, the the ship basically has to come out of warp speed, oh. which is what it's in while it's in astral sea. Yeah. You have to wait until you're actually in doom space uh, to travel at a regular pace to fish. No fishing, so, then. Do you want to stop the, uh, the no. warp speed? Okay. No, no. Okay. Okay. All right. Um... Back to bonding with the crew. Uh, this is not sure a game. It's maybe some information you learn. Is anybody going to? Well, I guess everyone's going to probably have some uh, conversation with somebody at some point. Um, Anyone who wants to learn something more about Crux 
Give me a persuasion roll, please. Ooh. I'd like to burn. Simon, Simon is pretty um, Simon is pretty interested in chatting with peeps. Not good at it, but he's thinking about it. Okay. Anybody else going to try to open up with the uh, crux? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Say again, silky tongue. Okay. Enix, if you want, you can do it, but you're going to be disadvantaged because you're an astro elf. And he no. still doesn't like you. <laughs> yeah, I don't like him either. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll say, well, both Vega and Rich, you guys catch a uh, crux at one point where he's kind of sulking down below in a cup of ale. And uh, after one too many ales, he starts to reveal the source of why he's kind of sulking and why he's uh, stricken with so much shame. He tells you long ago, the Commodore, uh, him, tried to destroy the Imperial Fortress in the Astro Sea, but his fleet was routed by the Elven Armada. So Crux's flagship was one of the handful of, of vessels to escape, though only after it suffered terrible damage from the Prince Zealoth's solar dragon mount. That's uh, Zadalia's brother. So solar dragon mount is new news for you guys. He actually has some kind of a dragon mount. Tells you Crux lost many comrades that day, and his hatred of the Xerixian Empire is equaled only by his disgust at his own cowardice and failure. So, secret revealed. Zeleth has a solar dragon mount. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any anti-dragon spray? <laughs> That's called polymorph, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> or banishment, something like that. It's a dragon. No, it's a duck. Poof. <laughs> Actually, can anybody cast slow? Or Okay. So that's all the bonding exercises for this time. Uh, now it is time for potential um, random encounters. So three to five days, I'll say you spent a day doing this carousing with nothing. So uh, someone, let's start with Don. Roll me a D20. Roll in a D20. Roll in, roll in, roll in. Keep those dice rolling. Well. Ooh, look at you. Hold, please. Uh, which book is this? You guys, so the way it works in warp speed, you continue warp speed until you come across something that is large enough to have its own gravity field. Typically like another ship or something to become in close proximity of it. So your ship comes to a halt, drops out of warp speed, for lack of a better term. And you can see a shell of some kind of a Spelljammer ship. So I need Don, since you rode this, roll me a, a D100, please. D100. Seventy-four. I hope that's good. Uh, you come across it's in two pieces. Um, you've probably never seen this kind of ship before, but uh, either Enix or Crux or some of the Hadazi will tell you this is called a squid ship. I don't know if I've got. I don't think I even have a squid ship in my information yet. Squid ship sounds interesting. They like so. fishes. So NX would know this as he's seeing it? Yeah, since he's from the uh, uh, wild space, Astro Sea, a squid ship. Among the oldest types of spell jamming vessels, squid ships are popular with privateers and are often used as patrol ships. Standard weapons on a squid ship include a forward-mounted mangonel, two aft-mounted ballista, and a reinforced bow for ramming. The tentacles that extend from the bow account for nearly half the ship's keel length. Ship squids can float and sail on water, and they can land on the ground. Again, it's in two pieces, and I'll say that uh, two of the four tentacles are missing. Do you guys wish to investigate, or are you going to leave it alone? 
I say leave it alone. Go on. Let's throw the fairy fire or the fire on it. Yes. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I say move on. Move along, folks. But there could be treasure out there. <clears throat> there could. There could be a be trap. A There'd be all sorts of shit happening there that we don't want to deal with. Hey, your buddy you didn't mess with before could have just moved to this ship. Remember your good friend Elf that you left trapped in that uh, other ship? I don't know how many of you guys were there for that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just need a consensus from the group. You guys want to investigate? Or you're going to leave it. I'm good with what you guys decide, but my vote is move along. Move along. Okay. Oh, and move along. All right, then. Okay, uh, that's day two. Day three, uh, Simon, give me a d20. The scroll of the comet on the ship. Okay, nothing happens. Okay, third day, Gary, roll me a d20. Twelve, you already had a twelve. Roll again. Or I'll bump it up one. <laughs> All right, I'm bumping it up one. <laughs> what about the four? <laughs> nope, you roll a 12 twice. Something's going to happen. So it should be an 11. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, this is a good one. I like this. All right, so uh, again, the ship come, slows down to a, a normal speed again within the Astral Sea. Um. Crux with his uh, crap. What do you call it? The spyglass uh, notices uh, not too far off, but far enough off where he doesn't feel threatened. Is a astral sea kraken off in the distance? He tells everyone to basically don't move. And this is where Grimzod steps forward and shares with you one of his special abilities he has. As a crew member, Grimzod takes a seat at the front of the ship, the very front of it, gets down on, on uh, like a cross his legs position and starts to meditate. And you guys, I don't know how to describe it. It's, 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 almost, it's almost like a, a wave of very gentle, like heat wave kind of goes over the, the ship. And then Grimzod stands back up and says, it's all right, folks. We're invisible now. This will last for at least another hour or so, so we don't have to worry about that crack in seeing us. I can only do this once a day, but I thought this was the time to uh, uh, yeah. share that this ability. So you guys have uncovered another secret, that Grimzod has this ability to basically turn your ship invisible uh, once a day. Mm. So use that information however you wish. Nice job, Grimmy. How long does it stay invisible? An hour? Yeah, you said this can last for an hour. Oh, you can only hours. cast it once per day. Okay. Very good. Since you had two random encounters, but you didn't do anything with it, one more roll into the fourth day. So, Rich, from AD20. Don't you dare roll me a 12 again. Four. Okay, nothing happens. Okay. Skip that section. Okay, so you guys can see off in the distance as the ship drops out of warp speed, you can see a a giant uh I guess sphere. Which you, at this point, you have seen several of them. That is the actual wild space of Doom Space. As you enter through this sphere, a silvery haze thins as the ship enters a system that appears to have no sun. The ship glides between colossal fragments of smoky gray crystal, remnants of an outer shell of fantastic proportions. As silent and lifeless as the graveyard, Doom Space gives new meaning to the phase Dead of Night. After four days of travel through the Astral Sea, Crux tells you that you got at least, he pulls out the wild, sorry, the wild space orrery, tells you guys got another three days of travel within the wild space before he can reach the moon of Arun. 
As you're making your travel there, you catch a sight of a yawning black vortex, limed in dim light. Wild Space Ori shows the black vor shows the black vortex. It's like a little hologram thing when he pulls it up. Shows the black vortex with two planets slowly spawning around it. The system has 12 moons, one close to the vortex, one orbiting each planet, and nine outer moonlets. There, says Crux, pointing at the biggest of the outer moons, our rune is just is just a couple days away. With luck, that's where we'll find my old comrade Warwick. Blast them off. <laughs> I didn't know his last name until just now. Warwick, blast them off. His mission here is to create unity out of chaos, and knowing him, he's done a bang-up job. Okay, so two more days of wild space. Do you guys want an opportunity for a random encounter? You may get right to the Arun, the moon of Arun. I'll let you guys decide. There's good and bad things that come out of encounters. It's not all bad. Control the dice. Yeah. Everyone in agreement? We got the gamble before. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Who wants to uh, go back to the front? Don. I'm AD20. Got it, Donnie. Got this, man. Don't roll a four or a 12. A 15. Four or a 12. Oddly specific. Or a 15. Damn it. Okay. Uh, as you guys passing through some asteroid debris, you guys can see another derelict ship. Uh, this time, Crux points it out as a lamprey. I'll have to look that up if you want me to describe it to you. I don't remember what a lamprey is. I think it's kind of like a squid ship, but with just short tentacles at the front of it. Lamprey ships are and uh, being being among the oldest Bojang ships still in use. Sirlons. That was those things you saw in the. Uh, uh, the first encounter, the kind of the grub-looking guys that some of them could transform. Because your Sirlons are particularly fond of these type of ships. Uh, they use metal grappling jaws built into its bow. A lamprey ship can attach itself to another ship, which is a critical feature during a boarding during their boarding actions. Other standard weapons include four ballista on the main deck. Lamprey can float on water, though it can't land safely on the ground. Lamprey ships that land on the ground have the distressing habit of rolling over as one of the few crews have discovered to their dismay. All right, so you got a Derek Lamprey broken into two halves on a nearby asteroid. So, same question as before. Do you guys want to approach and investigate? Do you want to keep moving on? Damn. I want to investigate. What do you guys want to do? I could go for that. Do something interesting. That's two. But there's risk. So I would accept the, uh, the votes from the remaining two. If they're both against it, then I say we move on. One of them's for it. <laughs> I'm feeling a little adventurous. So yeah, check so her out. All this so flying is a little boring. Okay. All right, let me go check. I think I create a map for these random encounters. One second, please. Figure out which one of these makes sense for this one. Oh, yeah, this one will work. I like it. All right, you're probably going to drop your character sheets on here, but let's see if I've got this set up correctly so you guys can see. Can you guys see? Is it all black? That's very yeah, blurry. Beautiful. A very big sheep, and then a broken sheep on an asteroid. I hear someone say it's blurry. It's cleared up now. It must be a roll 20 thing. Okay. Yeah, so if you guys want to drop your tokens onto the ship here, you can. And then the ship at the top of your screen over here is the lamprey ship that is broken in two. Let me drop crux on here for you guys if you want. Commodore crux. 
And I'll say Grimzod the back here. Wait, and you, you do have the two, you have one here and one here of the uh, Alchemist fire next to your tree hunt if you want. Okay. Uh, I guess technically all these ships have like a little dinghy or something that you can use to uh, go out and uh, basically into other areas where your ship can't fit. And that's what you guys will need to do to take a closer look of this uh, lamprey that's basically uh, stuck, crashed, whatever you want to call it, on this side of this asteroid. Okay, do it. Take the yep. take the dinghy. I like playing with dinghies. Okay, let me find a little rowboat. I think I've got one. Just Row, for boat and oh, that robot's got to be bigger than that. Yeah, see the boat? Yeah. Okay, so that's just there for demonstration purposes. I'll say that all four of you can fit in there. Okay. Uh, so all four of you going to go in the boat. Any of you guys want to stay on the main ship? I have an alternate way of getting over there. It's up to you. How far is it? Well, let's, I'll, I'll say this map is accurate, so let's see if I got my distance set up correctly. This is roughly 35 feet to the edge of the asteroid. And I'll say the gravity plane of this ship is roughly 40 feet. Okay. Um, I, I think the tree is going to ready its action with uh, those two barrels that okay. are on the top side. So um, if uh, any threats are directed or detected, it's going to start hauling or hurling those. I just want to double check what it's uh, throwing distances with the boulder. Uh, range of 60 feet or anything beyond that to 180 feet is a disadvantage. So it can reach out with 60 feet. Okay. I'll put him right here for right now. Okay. All right. So all four of you guys are heading over on the boat. Is that correct? Yep. <clears throat> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going. Okay. All right. Let me. Um, whoever is manning the ship, just move your token over here somewhere and kind of tell me what direction you're going. Uh, you're going just straight ahead? Are you going from the side? Do you want to go around it? What do you want to do? Uh, I think we should either go here or here and not here because if there's people inside, then both sides can come out at us. But if we show up on one side... Or the other. Let's go to the stern. Go to the ass end. Okay. Okay, so you guys are heading over this direction, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so let me put the boat over here. Go and move your tokens over in the general area of that boat. No, on your rowboat. Sorry, I didn't specify on the rowboat, not on the big boat. Under the boat <laughs> above. If whoever's on two spots, yeah, just put you up to the side. Okay, there we go. That that'll work. Okay. Excuse me. All right, so that is a good spot right there. <laughs> okay, you guys got to be in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> can't be in the boat because the boat is above us. You got to put the boat behind us. Yeah, it's it's a layer above us, Brian. You've got to send it to back. Oh, that's right, right. Here, let me do it this way. Uh, about that. Okay, and then okay, Enix, since you're in front. Uh, you watch as the asteroid underneath it, a large eye opens up, and then a huge maw opens below you. 
Now we can roll initiative. Everybody in? Oh, I didn't mind roll. Oh, because I was on GM layer. Good job, Brian. Okay. Sort descending. All right, Enix, he gets one surprise round. So, rawr. Which one do I want to do? Oh, yeah, obviously this. Nom, 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 nom. Miss. Okay. Now it's your turn, Enix. All right. Enix is going to mm. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna hit that thing with some um burning hands. Okay, let's see it. Oh, deck save. Come on, dexterity. He's so dexterous. Oh, look at that. Does this thing really take fire damage? Wow, he really does. <laughs> okay. All right, nine points of fire damage. He does not like that. You he hear his tongue sizzle as you shoot him in the mouth. All right. Anything else, Phoenix? You staying in the boat? Um, you know what? I'm gonna uh pop up here on deck as a bonus action with my um starlight step. Oh, look at you using something fancy. Okay, so you're moving away from him then. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm up here now. Okay, so he'll get an opportunity attack on you. How's how's it do that? I just pop out of existence. It's like Missy Step. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't understand what Starlight Step was. I thought it was just something okay. that allowed you to jump a distance. Yep. Nope. So it's like Missy Step. It, it's exactly like Misty Step. Okay. All right. And he won't do that. Okay. Is that it for Enix? Uh, that is it. Okay. My guy is now going to step up and try the next feller. Uh, Mr. Arnold. Nom, nom, nom. Can he hit anything? Not nice. What's that? What did he roll? I didn't see the 15. Roll, yeah, no, he does not hit me. Nice try. Okay. But you lose. Okay, that's his turn. He'll stay right there. Uh, actually, you know, he's going to move right here, stay with the melee of you, but a little closer to Vega. Vega, what would you like to do next? Is the front of our ship up against of our rowboat up against the ship? Uh, yeah, you still have to make a little jump to get over to it. Obviously mm -hmm. close enough. Good chunk. Wow. Good chunk. Legending, and, uh, and they are magical, right? Yep. Okay. You said bits and pieces of rock fly after each, uh, after each one of them? And then I'm going to actually, my bonus action, I'm going to hit him again. I'm not going to take off. Oh, 12. That one misses. Okay. Stay tight where I am. Stay right there? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, Arnold. He pissed me off. I'm going to burn a spell slot. Divine Eminence, which will add 3d6 to my damage. On a melee attack with my mace. 17. So I not had, oh, 17 misses. Wow, that kind of sucks. Looks like uh, a giant it's rock next with an eye in the mouth. So, yeah, Sorry. it's pretty tough. <laughs> Got it. Is that it for Arnold? Bang. That's it for Arnold. Okay. And then he's going to do, 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 slam into the side of the boat. Need everyone to make me a deck save. 
It's in the boat. You know, it gets a six, uh, 16 or lower. I guess knocked out of the boat. And you're basically like in water. So difficult terrain to swim, move, just like you're in water. Okay. And who's up next? Simon. What do I have to do to get back in the boat? Uh, half your movement. Like climbing up on a mountain. A mount. All right. So I climb up under the boat. Okay. And I punch him. And uh, you don't punch him. That's Ouch. Hurt your, hurt your knuckles. Okay. Enix. Um, I guess Enix is oh. going to come over. Hold on. You guys want a minute strategize? I keep forgetting about that. Let me add it in here. One minute strategize. Go. Okay. We want to kill this thing, or we want to get away. Yeah. Seems like there's going to be some goods underneath if we can, if we can destroy this thing. Yeah. It does, I know it doesn't like fire. Yeah. But it might be too too huge as well. So I don't well, know. It might have too many hit points for us. Punch it. Yeah. To be clear, Don, uh, the f you don't think the fire does more damage than normal, but it, right. it took damage from it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I say we bail. <laughs> <laughs> Two fucking guys. You wanted to go. <laughs> I and let's go random encounter. Let's go have a look at the ship. And then yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> okay. This thing. Well, let's waste it then. And then we can loot this bitch. <laughs> okay, is that your strategy? I think so. All right, Enix, what are you doing? I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, come up to the edge here and and uh, give him a little bit of more warmth. <clears throat> okay, that's a cone. Okay, DC 15, deck save. Why are you picking on his decks, man? He's so good <laughs> at decks. <laughs> Opens up its mouth like it's trying to swallow your fire. Okay, anything else, Enix? Um, <clears throat> does he look at bloodied or anything yet? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay. Okay. Who was who got knocked out besides Simon? Simon climbed back in, right? Yeah. Someone else got knocked out. Arnold got knocked out. Arnold. Arnold. Okay. So Arnold, I'm gonna put you right here just for simplistic reasons. I know you're not technically there, but he's going to try to attack you with advantage. Uh, Rawr. I'm assuming a 24 hits you. Is that correct, Arnold? Yes. Can you okay. hear me? And now I do. Now I need you to make me a deck save. Oh, not good. Okay. Uh, as he bites you, he sucks you into his maw, and you are now inside his gullet. Mm. And it does not look. It does not look like it's a fun time in there. We should probably run now. Okay. <laughs> okay, Vega. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, I'm going to give him a good punch. Waka. Yeah, that, was not a, that was not a good punch. Waka. That was not a good punch either. It was closer, but not a good, not good enough. Bonus action. Waka. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> it like turns its gonna... head around. Here's punch on the back of its stone skull. I'm going to burn a key point, give him another waka. There you go. Little, little pieces of rock kind of fall off the back of its its rock skull. And that's it for vague. Okay. Okay, Arnold, hold please while I read what happens to you while you're inside there. You are blinded 
and you are restrained, Arnold. And you take, ooh, this at the start of each of your turns. Holy shit. Okay, uh, this times two. Urgh. 48 points. 48 points of I acid. Am, I, am, I am down. Is that I right? Am, let, me read it. let me read this again. I am down. Holy shit. Thanks, Brian. You killed me. Let me read it again. <laughs> let me put it out in front of everybody here. It takes 10d6 ass damage at the start of each of its turns. Okay. Holy shit. You know what? I'm not going to make it 10d6. I'm going to make it 5d6. You take 24. That's just nuts. Holy shit. So take 24, not 48. Okay. I'm back up again. Okay. Arnold, now you can take your turn. With my last eight hit points, I'd like to cast <laughs> Spirit Guardian. <laughs> Spirit Guardian. Uh huh. Okay. As mm -hmm. you call upon your deity to cast magic, you yeah. see it kind of fizzle out of existence. Oh, no. Um, right. See in the write up where it says is deposited in its anti magic gullet. Oh, I didn't catch that. Oh, oh I didn't realize it was in there. <laughs> I was hoping that'd be a surprise, but nope, there you go. It was a surprise for Arnold. <laughs> okay, well, that's my action. Uh, can I move towards the mouth a little bit? Uh, you're restrained than, uh, and you're blinded. Okay, restrained uh, says um, speed becomes zero. Then uh, I am out of things to do. Okay. Next up is Simon. You watch as uh, Arnold got swallowed whole. Um, what do I have that can do a pile of damage? Um, I don't know. And I Arc should have been paying more attention when he got bit, but I wasn't. Um... Uh, I don't have a lot. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I am going to use my Wand of Lightning Bolts, which has full charges, because I have not used it yet. That Wand of Lightning Bolts has seven charges. I am going to use every single one of those charges. <clears throat> and I am going to Lightning Bolt the fuck out of this thing. Um, it's a level three, uh, so it's going to get cast. It's actually going to get cast at a level higher than this, one higher than this, but that's the way it goes. Holy crap, I rolled crappy. Uh, but dexterity save, DC 15. It's going to take 39 points of damage if it fails its dexterity save. Okay. Oh, and it'll be, there'll be, hold on, there'll be one more. One more D6 on top of that. Hold on. Uh, 39 plus 4. So technically 43 points of damage it's going to take. If it misses nice. 15. Let's see if he can roll really good for a change. No, it shouldn't have been an advantage. It should have been a normal one. So that's 43 points of damage. Oh, boy. Damage. He does not like that. 44. Let me see if he's bloodied. Um, half of that is uh, ooh, nope, he is not quite bloody but he took a shit ton of damage, you know that <laughs> okay, anything else out of Simon? um no, what else can I do? I did 44 fucking points of damage okay. yeah and it slams into the side of the boat again deck save this is just to knock you guys out of the boat. He's not trying to hit you. He's just trying to knock you guys out of the boat. Okay. Simon falls back out of the boat again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, who's up next? Oh, one minute to strategize. Go. Okay. I'm going to jump back in the boat and slice it up some. Yeah, I'm going to keep punching. My life depends on it. 
No, the one of the. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. Glad you don't have another lightning. (laughs) All right. Enix, what are you going to do? Enix is going to jump down into the boat. And then he's going to use his uh, great sword and do a little hack and slash. Oh, shit. <laughs> Good thing Arnold's inside his gullet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's do it again then. There you go. That, that, that finds a spot there. 13 points. And that is, is that a magical sword? It is not. I thought you had acres, didn't you? Or was that a great, was that a long sword, that, acres? I forget what it was. Are. Oh, that's sorry. A, I'm wrong character. It's a completely different game. <laughs> Oh. Okay. He takes it and now he looks like he is bloodied. <laughs> okay. So did it take normal damage? Uh from that hit? Yeah. Yeah, you don't seem like it did more or less than what you expected. Okay. Perfect. Um and I Well, nope. I guess I'm gonna sit right here. Yep. Okay. Ooh, he's up again. Um, let's see. Dur, 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 dur. It's just going to try to. Uh, uh, dur, dur, dur. Can it have more than one in its mouth? I got to read. Yeah, I did read that. It can only have one. Okay. All right, then. then Unless it's 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 in the write up for bite. Oh. Oh, maybe it's not. Diamonder can swallow only one creature at a time. Oh, yeah, it is. It's in the bite. Okay. All right. In that case, he is going to actually attack the boat this time. Not trying to knock you out. He's going to try to destroy the boat uh, with his lamb attack. Boats don't make a deck save. So 2d6 plus 5. Of course they make a deck save. They're boats. Let me do it this way. Someone roll me. I I have no idea how many hit points a... A little dingy should have. So I'll say someone roll me 4d6. That's how many hit points it has. 4d6 plus 6. First one to roll, that's what it has. <laughs> yeah, 16 hit points. Okay, and it does 2d6 plus 5 damage. Okay, 11 points. So it still has 3 hit points left, if I did my math right there. All right, and then it's going to roll away. Dex, you can? Nope. Dang right. That's it. I'm not. 21 hits for 11 points. Okay. It's going to continue to kind of roll. Across the edge of this asteroid. Okay. Uh, and it took his turn. I'm hungry. That was his turn. Vega. Okay. Can I get past Annex? Uh, it's just difficult terrain to go move through him. Okay. So 10, 15. How far to the boat? Uh, you're a monk. So it's just you can leap over there. Probably no problem. 20. Okay. I'm going to bonus action, activate my Eldritch Maw tattoo so I can hit him from 15 feet away. Nice. I'm going to uh, monk strike him once. 18. Monk, monk strike him twice. Yeah, we got to meet it to beat it. So 18 hits. Six points. And the and second one hits uh, for another seven. And then I'm going to, uh, that's all I got. And then I'm going to move over here, out of the way. Okay. Arnold, start of your turn. Guess what happens? 
with all your damage. Okay, I'm going to read this damage again, make sure I read it right the first time. 10d6. Oh, I did 5d10, so that's even less than what it should be. 10d6. So let me do this times 5. Not times 5. Uh, screw it. You take 20. <laughs> I'm not going to double that. No, no, no. Oh, boy. Arnold. I am down. Okay, Arnold, give me a uh, death save. Uh, I don't seem to have that button on this character sheet. What would that be? Just a D20. Uh, oh, just a roll, random D20. Got it. Hey, you come back up with one hit point. <laughs> oh, what happened? <laughs> Donnie, I'm not done yet. I'm coming for... Okay, so that's your turn. Simon. All right, so Simon's going to move back over here. Simon is going to, with his action, he's going to cast Thorn Whip. He crosses fingers. That does not hit. And then he's going to... Uh, he's going to uh, use uh, Quicken Spell, uh, two sorcery points, to cast Thunder Wave at this guy. He's going to upcast it to level two. DC 16 Constitution save for 12 damage. He's used, doing that as his bonus action with Quicken Spell. Okay. Is it half damage on a success? Yeah. Okay, so it's a it takes six level, points. It's a level two spell. Okay, it takes six points of damage. But he's still whole. All right, that's all I got. Okay, minute to strategize. Go. Okay, let's kill this thing and get him out. Yeah, that's all we can do. Get up close, but if he keeps going, are we wow. able to go on the surface of the asteroid? Yeah, well, we should be able yeah. to jump up on the ship. We've been, we are on the ship now. Yeah, so at the very that. least, you can get onto the ship. I understand yeah. that. I said asteroid. If he, yeah, rock boy I, goes I, here. I could follow him. Got it. Okay. Well, let's just keep punching, punching, smacking, smack, and lay some beatings on Ooh. this boy. Um, if somebody can't per or do much for the fight, maybe they could grab the boat and follow us. Because I know I could follow it, but I'm not sure I can get back. Okay, I'll allow that. That, uh, you know, Crux or someone is going to kind of circle around the asteroid. They can't get close enough to it to, to do anything with it. Well, technically, they probably could shoot with their uh, ballistae. Or if yeah. you want that tree on to throw some uh, alchemist fire. <laughs> well, not yet, but... Okay. Yeah. No, I was just making sure we could get back. Because, like, I've got my Misty Step spell thing but um i've only got three uses so okay so i'll do this i'll use the tree on it as a theater of the mind thing of where the ship is right now okay okay and i'll do that at uh strategy round is when the ship would, moves would the tree not be shooting barrels of fair of um alchemist fire at this thing i uh, i could if you guys want to rule that way well is Arnold right on top of him though. No, he's Arnold inside, inside, inside his gullet. Okay. He wasn't and he wasn't affected by my lightning. Yeah. Well, he shouldn't be because he's in an anti-magic field. True. But yeah, it, in the valley. Yeah. So yeah, we should have that thing. I don't know. What's how accurate is it? It's just going to be an attack. It's good, for six, it's good for 60, 60 feet. feet. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's do it then. So you do want the Trent to throw a... Yeah. One of those Alchemist fires? Should have been doing it yeah. the whole time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it's just a little close. That's what I'm... Yeah, but about. now that but this thing's running away from us, he probably we, he could do it. Okay. We'd be, we'd be safe, I think. Okay, I gotta okay. go back and find my keg of alchemist fire to see what this thing does. 
if it hits. Oh, I, I left mine up. It's uh, 2D6. Yeah, I'm just seeing if it's, oh, it's a radius or what it is. Uh, object deals 66 fire damage on a hit. Uh, the target is set ablaze and takes damage again every round in, in the case of a creature at the start of its turns until the yeah. fire is put out. A creature I'm within. Gonna, I'm going to rule it's within, it creates like a 10 foot uh, diameter when it hits something. Okay. Because that's kind of what I did when it blew up in the, the ship. So I want to stay consistent with that. Yep. Okay. All right. So if that's what you want, I'll have uh, the treatment go first in round since I don't have him in turn order. You guys good with that? Yep. Any other strategy you guys need to talk about? You guys good? I think we're good. Okay. Yep. All right. good. So I'm going so to roll this for the attack, but this damage doesn't count. I got to roll what the, the keg of Alchemist Fire does. Okay. So a 15, which is actually a shitty roll if you guys see his plus. And a 15 misses. Holy shit. How do I want to do this? Um, Arnold, I'll let you do it since you won't get hit by it. Roll me a D12 to see where around this thing it hits the asteroid and explodes. Three, three o'clock. So fire, 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 fire. I guess it doesn't really matter because it's not going to hit you guys, but if I can make it grow, kaboom. Okay, and that's now an active burning spot on the asteroid. Okay, Enix, what you doing? I'm going to move right up and uh, give him a couple of uh, stabbies with my great sword. 22 for 12 damage. That does hit. And I'm going to do it again for 10 damage. Okay, he's going to use a legendary action because he doesn't like getting hit by you and try to slam into you. Deck save, DC 16. Oh, shit. I hate deck saves. 2D6 plus 5. This plus 5. 13 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, anything else on Enix? Uh, yeah, he's got a little bit more movement, and he did not appreciate that either. Uh, so he is going to... Let me see how much movement I've got. So yeah, he's going to move back over here. Okay, he didn't want to use his reaction. Let's see. Nope, he's not going to use his reaction. He's going to let you go. That's right, he is. <laughs> Only because he can't swallow you. He's already got a mouthful. <laughs> All right, he's up next. He's going to five, ten. Actually, before he rolls like that, he's going to turn around and hawk a loogie at. We've got three choices, so one through seven. Simon, he's going to spit a loogie at you before he rolls away. Ah, 14. Probably misses, right? It's a miss. Okay. And then he's going to five, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30. Holy crap, he can move. 30 foot of movement? That is what he can do. Holy shnikes. Let me make sure it's not more. Nope, it's 20 feet. Thank you for double checking me. Oh. So right there. Okay. Okay. All right, and that's his turn. Vega. Okay. Yeah. 20, can I travel on the surface of the asteroid? You won't know until you try. Okay. I'm going to jump down to the surface of the asteroid. Can you give me an athletics acrobatics check? Oh, no problem. 
<laughs> it's like you're walking on water. <laughs> you do yeah, feel like as you jump down, it's kind of like you're in water, but you, okay. you're you're fine. Okay, I'm going to because I have my Eldritch tattoo in power. I can hit him fifteen out. So I'm going to uh, take a couple of shots. That was really bad. I hit myself in the nuts. <laughs> But that's really good. I doubt uh, that all that damage is correct. No. So do the quick math for me, somebody. What that should be. 14. 14 total? Yep, because the first seven is right. The second one actually should be a six. So that's 13 plus one for magical strike is 14. Okay. All right. He's not looking good, but he's still rolling away. And then a key point. They hit him two more times. For six more. He's still rolling after that hit. And then 23 for nine. As you hit him, you watch it kind of crump. It splits open, a pool of acid, and what's left of Arnold comes pouring out. Arnold, you are free. But you're still sitting in a thing of acid. With one hit point? Oh. Okay. So I'll say technically, since you're not in his gullet anymore, I'm going to give you a deck save with advantage to avoid taking any more acid damage. DC 13. Yes. There you go. You're able to roll out of the acid before any more burns through your skull. Okay. Ernie, Ernie are you okay, buddy? I'm back. <laughs> I've still... Oh, okay. All right. We are out of combat. Okay, he well, is dead. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty generous, so I'm going to walk over to Arnie, meet him out of the acid pool, and I'm going to use my ring of cure wounds and caress his buttocks gently, <laughs> and I'm going to use two charges of one d8 each. So roll two d8, or do <laughs> I roll it? I, I, I don't care. Either one of you guys. You guys decide. Roll. Go for it, Arnold. 2d8. 2d8. <laughs> oh, hey. better, better than nothing. Thank you. Better than a kick Thank in the you. nuts. We got to get back to the boat. Get back to the boat. Okay, but before that, I want to I wanna open up this thing's belly. I did. Oh, you did? And yeah, he split it in half. half. Oh, that's why he came pouring out. <sighs> was there anything in there then? I'm, I'm not going to make you roll for it. We're going to roll a random table to see what might be inside its gullet. Okay. Okay, so one second while I pull up my Excel spreadsheet. And whoever did the killing blow, I'll let them do the roll. I think that oh, was Vega, yeah. was it not? Yep. What am I rolling? What am I rolling? I'm going to pull up my... Uh, first, you're going to roll a D100. Yep. What'd you roll? A 50. Nope, it's uncommon. Four hundred and fifty-three. <laughs> wow. What are the chances of that? <laughs> Holy shit. One in four hundred and fifty-three. <laughs> <laughs> 50 I think you guys already have these maybe it's in the other game well do you want a chance of having two of something or do you want to re-roll I won't tell you what it is I'm not for certain if it's in this game or another game but I'm pretty sure you guys have rolled this before let's re-roll re-roll okay Ooh, that's, that's different. Four, two, three. Ow. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is better or not. Uh, why the hell would this be in his gullet? No, that makes no sense. Roll again. I'm going <laughs> to over overrule that. Okay. We'll eventually get something to make sense. <laughs> 282. 
That's a new number. Okay, that'll work. So uh, he has an anti-magic gullet, which means pretty much anything inside of his gullet was basically shut down, but doesn't mean that his acid would destroy a magical item, just the magical properties of it don't function. So you find a, a shield plus one inside his gullet. Ooh. Wow. That's very nice. So decide amongst yourselves if you would like something from that. Can't use a shield, so somebody else. I could use a shield, and Simon could use a shield. And I don't know what you got for a weapon, Simon, but if you can... I, I'm using a great sword right now, so... Uh, no, Simon definitely does not. We need a weapon. Take the take the shield. Anno can use a shield too. Oh, you're right. You're yeah, right. Between the two of you, take it. I yep. don't need it. Arnold, if you're gonna use it, I'm I'm using my great sword right now. So yeah, yeah, I uh, I carry my mace, so I could uh, I have a free hand. Yep, yeah, perfect. Just make sure that Arnold doesn't already have a plus one shield. He's got a plus oh. one brace, brace breastplate. Oh, breastplate. That's what it was. Okay. Plus one fake boobs? Nice. Yes. <laughs> the nipples are extra, extra sharp. I use them to open envelopes. And I'm feeling a little bit uh, generous tonight. I'm also going to have you guys roll twice on the common magic item table. So uh, Vega rolled that one. Um, I'll let Arnold Rich, since he was in the gullet, roll one of these. Okay. Roll me a... Hold on a second. I'll tell you the number. A D-169. All right, so it's slash R one D one sixty nine forty four. These are common magic items, so don't expect it to be anything outlandish. Warple sword, <laughs> a a heart glow lantern. I'm gonna have to pull that out of my uh, magic item library to show what that does. Uh, someone else, go ahead and roll another. What I say, D one sixty nine. Correct. I have a Care Bear on it. D-169. You go to 143. Smoldering armor. That's out of Xanathar. So that may be in your um, compendium. So while you're doing that, I'm going to go back and pull in the Heart Glow Lantern. I can't wear armor. Anyone? Anyone? Euler? No smolder. Well, maybe I don't know how to spell smolder. Smolder? Ah, I didn't. I thought there was a U in there. Uh, wisps of harmless, odorless smoke rise from this armor while it is worn. It's a wondrous item. The billowing cloak. You stand there in an invisible breeze. Makes the cloak move. Yeah. If Bryn had, if Bryn had both the the billowing cape and the smoldering armor, that'd be awesome, right? Oh, yeah. Oh Good bar to him. Unstoppable. For storytelling, that'd be a great bar item. Bard. There you go. Bar item. Bard. Bard. Did, 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 did. My bar warlock. Item. My warlock has the cloak in the other game, Rich. Yeah. She stands there and uh, she be the anime magical girl. As we're with the <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. And it's probably on the archive list. It is. So pull that out of archived. Heart glow. Shit, not characters. Handouts. Who took the shield plus one? Arnold. Arnold. Arnold did. There it is. Restore. There we go. Finally got it up there. Okay. Basically like a never-ending torch. If I'm reading that correctly. Yeah, like a glow stick. 
Yeah. No fuel is required. I'm right close stick. Yep. Where they go? Two common items and a shield plus one. Where are we at on time? We are we are at two and a half hours. Okay, so we still got a little bit to go. Okay, and that's all you find within the ship. Uh, there, I don't know, let me read, make sure it wasn't like a chance for oh, that anything was, intact. I thought that was all in rock boy. So what's it name? was. It was. Okay. Let's uh, go look at my notes and see if there was something potentially in the ship. Huge chest, I'm sure, full of gold and platinum. There is what a ten percent. There's a ten percent chance you find something magical within the debris. So who hasn't rolled yet? Like Rob hasn't rolled anything on this adventure we've been on here, right? You can do it, Rob. One through ten. Nope. Okay. And there is a two percent chance that has a spell jamming helm. Wanna try that again, Rob? One or two? Pretty shitty odds. Okay. Nope. Nothing magic. It's already been picked clean. Okay. Back on the ship, I'm assuming. Yeah. And heading towards Doom Space. What kind of armor is that uh, smoldering? Oh, I didn't say, did I? Hold on, I got a way to roll for that, I think. Uh, da -da -da. Roll me a D10. Okay, it is of medium armor. So now you got to roll me a D100. Anybody else want to give it a shot? Nope. Nope. Seventy-two. It is a breastplate. Oh, a smoldering breastplate. Breastplate is. What's that over uh, chain mail? Uh, chain mail is heavy armor. Oh, so my AC would actually go down. Probably. I have to go look up. I, what? Yeah, I'll look it up. That's all right. Okay. Yep. I wanted to say breastplate is like 14 or 16. All right, back on the ship. Heading to Doom Space, or you're already in Doom Space. You're heading for the Moon of Arun. Fourteen, just for the record. Okay, let's move you back to the living ship map. Okay, as you guys descend upon the Moon of Arun, flashes of light on the surface of Arun can be seen from orbit. As the ship descends down towards the moon, you see a wasteland dotted with pillars of rock. Arcs of lightning leap from pillar to pillar. The ship heads toward a specific plateau that is 100 feet tall, a mile wide, and covered with jungle foliage. Uh, knowing the ship can't land safely, Commodore Crux gives the order for the ship to hover just above the treetops in the location that he believes were our, were his com his comrade uh, Warwick Blastemoff resides at the top of the treetops. You guys can see a makeshift fort with a small little keep at one side of it. Crux leans over the side and shouts, "Mister Flinch, drop the ladder!" And on that command, you guys watch as two. Similar looking creatures come walking out from the from the keep below and they look give me a perception roll, everybody. Perception. Wow. That should have a plus four, right? Simon, I don't know if that's something weird or is that correct? That's guidance. That's correct. Okay. Okay. 
All right. So uh, all four of you guys recognize two of the folks coming out. They are the same race of that of Commander Crux, and they are pointing crossbows to the sky. Do you guys want to react to that? Pointing at us or as if to guard us while we're coming down, cover us while we're coming down? There are two down below, just walked right. out of the makeshift keep in the middle of a wooden fort. Yep. Um, they are GIF, like Commander Commodore Crux, and they are right. both pointing crossbows up towards the ship. Oh, okay. That's what I was asking. Are they pointing the crossbows? Because you said they were pointing their crossbows up. I just wanted to clarify whether it was up at the ship or just up in the general direction. Okay. Right. <clears throat> um, no, I'm not going to take any action yet. Anybody else? Reaction, um, greetings. <laughs> Holler, greetings. Okay. God dang it, I closed my freaking hand out. I'm sorry, hold on. Rex holds out a hand. As everyone else kind of sees the same thing, and he shouts down below two names, Cyrillus and Blanche, and tells them to hold their weapons, that it's, it's he, Commodore Crux. They drop their crossbows and welcome you guys to descend the ladder if you wish to do so. And now I'll switch to the map for this one. I think I got a map. There it is. So I don't have a ship on here, but I'll say the ladder is roughly right around this spot where I'm pinging. Was it on the right layer? Do you guys see where I was pinging? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And here are the two makeshift gift-looking fellows. So you guys can drop your tokens on her if you want to come down the ladder. I guess I should drop Crux down here since he knows the folks. Commodore Crux. Okay, everybody on the map that wants to be on the map? Looks like I'm missing uh, one. I'm working again. at it. I'm working at it. <laughs> oh, I can't find your character. Let me do it for you. No, I got him. I just, uh, I keep going too far down. Okay. All right, so Arnold's going to hop down and then. I'm, over, right? I'm, I'm healed up then, right? Yeah, I'll say it's been like another day. So yeah, you guys can all max back out if you want before you reach this moon. I'm cool with that. Excellent. All right, so Warwick and these other two gifts kind of exchange handshakes and greetings. And during the conversation, they share with the uh, crux and you guys that Warwick is no longer here. They share that uh, they, along with Warwick, have been trading with the local Artuk tribes. Uh, Artuk is the prior race that nobody other than Enix is, is aware of. Artuk are basically, they're, they're out of this spell jamming module. They are, for lack of a better term, like a giant starfish type creature. Um, but the center of the starfish kind of like comes up like an ET head. If you can imagine that, and that's where its mouth and its tongue and all that stuff is inside the, the neck portion of that. So they're actually kind of ugly. Let me see if I can do a handout real quick of these guys, unless you guys don't care, but I'll, I'll bring it up later. So They've been trading with them? They've been trading with them, right. Uh, so they've been trading with the local Artuk tribes in hopes of gaining their allegiance to the Alliance to fight the Xerixian Empire. They tell you that relations ran afoul after the Ar Artuk's demands increased. And Warwick was getting desperate. So he left for Mercane Vocath. Uh, Mercane, again, Enix would know this, but either he or Crux or someone else would eventually explain. Mercanes are basically like these, for lack of a better term, these giant type of species that are known throughout wild space and the Astral Sea for uh, elaborate merchants. They deal in spell jamming helms. They deal in some of the most more hard to find kind of things. And because of that, they they have a lot of power. Um, if you screw them over, you're basically screwing over every single one of them. 
because they all have like a, a hive mind. Uh, as long as they know each other, they can speak across wild space, across the astral sea to each other. So for that reason, mainly is why most people don't try to screw with them. Because if you piss one of them off, you piss them all off. So any hopes of ever having dealings with them or being civil with them go out the window if uh, they're not treated. Um, I don't know if the respect is the right word, just because they some of them can be quite, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, illustrious, quite proud, quite conceited, and can come across as basically assholes uh, to anyone they're dealing with. But you just got to deal with it if you want to have business with them. So basically, Warwick headed for a certain Mercane named Vokath uh, with a daring plan. He was going to fight in the arena, in Vokath's arena, in order to gain favor with Mercane Vokath in, in hopes that he can help him pull together some of the other races, species within Doom Space to help build this alliance or coalition they're trying to build against the Xerxian Empire. Uh, Crux gave Cyrillus and Blanche orders to leave Arun on the next supply run if he did not make it back. Uh, somewhere here it says how long ago he left. Uh, there it is. War Warwick left five days ago, and they said if uh, he's not back within two more days, that that's when the next supply run comes, that they are to leave without him. So they tell you they've pretty much been holed up here. Um, they've stopped the trading or relations with the Artuk because they've become too violent. They were just waiting for either Crux to come back or for the supply run to show up uh, before they leave. Okay, that's all the stuff they share freely. Is there anything specific you guys want to ask them about or look around? What do you want to do next? Mm. How how far is it to the uh, fighting arena? Uh, they'll tell you by most bow jamming ship. It's probably about a three day flight to reach there. It's around one of the other moons within wild, within Doom Space. This realm that you're in now, or this wild space that you're in now. I think we should go get the dude. Tell these guys to wait for us, and we'll go get him. What if he comes back while we're gone? It's shitty for us. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and and yeah, if we go in that direction, will his ship? Will we be able to cross paths with his ship? Yeah, but obviously there's a reason he's not back. Well, he said a week, and it's only been five days. He said if he's not back by the time the next supply run comes, that they should leave on that supply run ship. And go where? Back home. So, in other words, he thinks he's dead. Okay. So, yeah, I guess we need to go get him. I think so. Could be laid up with some space hussy, but and that's always the risk, right? Maybe you got, maybe you got demanded to go into this arena. But right. I tell you, that's what, that was his intent, was to go fight in the arena, because that's mm -hmm. how... That's what Vokath is notorious for. He respects those who fight in his arena and win, uh, both from a monetary standpoint that he gains from doing that if they're good at it. And then it's just a, uh, it's a common way that he has been known to respect those who show their worth in the arena, gain favor with him, basically. Yeah. The way to measure your penises. <laughs> <laughs> Not all who fight in the arena have penises. Well, no. obviously, obviously, that that's where this sort of leading yeah. leading us is towards his penis. So, I think we should go towards the arena. I think, yes, 
And hopefully we'll find him between here and there. But if we don't, maybe we'll find him there. Maybe something's happened to him. Maybe he broke his leg. Maybe he's just sad. Maybe we'll just find his penis. Maybe we'll just find his penis. (laughs) No one is getting an inspiration card for that. No. (laughs) What if we find one? Do we have a drawing of his penis so we know what it looks like? What if we find one and it's not his? We'd be able to How tell. How do you tell? Because his will do blast him off. That's right. Goddamn hippo penis. Mm. I say we head to the fighting place. Yeah. Well, Crux and both Cyrillus and Blanche will offer to you know, give you guys a warm meal before you take off if you want. But That'd be a good they, idea. They're going to they're gonna stay put and wait for either Crux's return or the supply run, whichever comes first. So, oh, are you guys no. wanting to stay for dinner? Are you guys wanting to take off? What do you guys want to do? Well, let's stay for guys, dinner. Yeah. Dinner's always good. It's dinner, dinner man. Stay for dinner. You don't know when we're going to get another dinner. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, we'll, and we'll tell them if the ship shows up and we're not here, leave the supplies and then go on your merry way. Does he have a set of sending stones or something that we can converse with him? Uh, they don't have one. I tell you the one that he did have with Crux. Uh, oh, he did stopped, have a sending stone. <laughs> stopped, uh, stopped working about a few months ago. He right. said he's used it a few times, but it was someone other than Commodore Crux. All right. Huh. So where is Commodore Crux's sending stone? Uh, he has it. Oh. He's got one, and the paired one is one. Oh, sorry, not Crux. Sorry. Oh, Warwick okay. has a sending okay. stone. Commodore Crux, Marie told you he lost that in a gambling uh, debt back on the Rock of Brawl a few months ago. Okay. Why would he gamble away? A single sending stone. I'm an idiot. Actually, you know what? Whoever agreed to that being part of the bet is an idiot. Right? <laughs> Who needs that? Because like, I know you're stupid. stupid. Here, here's I'll... a here's a single walkie talkie from a pair. Yeah, what? Oh, you'll give me extra money for it so I can bet on it? Oh, great. It was a sure thing, I tell you. I don't I'm not sure if they cheated or not, but it was a sure thing. Well, I thought it was. All right. All right. So I hear you guys say you want to stay for dinner. You guys want to take oh. off? I want to eat. All right. Then, so. uh, All right. So Cyrillus and Blanche will invite you into their abode. And they start cooking up something that smells absolutely delicious. I don't know if you're going to ask what it is or not, but. What is it? <laughs> hold hold while I roll randomly in Boo's Astral Menagerie. Well, you shouldn't have said it. I know. I shouldn't have. Uh, da, da, da. I bet you it's like space oatmeal or something. Uh, it's a it's a rare del- it's a rare delicacy, I tell you. Sometimes it's very difficult to get. Uh we actually traded this with the Artooks a few months ago. They had a, quite a supply of it. It's a sirloin steak. <laughs> nice. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Gary, remember that time when we had space sirloin steak at the boathouse? Yeah, that's right. It's fantastic. So for those who didn't play sirloins, you guys fought them in, I think, the first encounter in wild space. A little giant grub people. <laughs> All right. So you guys uh, enjoy Sirlon. dinner. Is it sirloin mignon? <laughs> oh, it could be top sirloin. Yeah, <laughs> nice. All right, so you guys can I'll join them in the hut if that's what you plan on doing. And at, as, as dinner concludes, um, you guys hear a scraping noise along the wall over here, and both Cyrillus and Blanche grab their crossbows. It's Warwick. It could be. You never know. He's back. 
All right, go and move yourselves inside the keep, guys. I'm assuming you're all in there having dinner, so move your tokens in there. We Before we see what happens next, and this is probably what we'll pick up in the next session. Hey. Uh, both Blanche and Cyrillus shout, ready, ready your arms, fellas. I think the Artooks are back. And at that, uh, Enix, give me a perception roll since you're closer to the door. All right. Enix, we'll give you a perception roll. I'm going to call you Enix forever. I just know it. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't know why you wrote it twice, but 17 was good enough. Uh, you can see a tentacled claw wrap around the side of the keep opening. Let me switch to the right layer so you can see where I'm pinging. Right there, there in front of us? And then you see this up here at the door. Looks friendly. It is an R2. And its head pops up and it lets out a couple clicks and blah, 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 and then it shoots something at you. And we will roll initiative uh, as we start the next session. And that's what we'll end tonight's session. Cool. All right. You guys made it through much further than I was anticipating. So you're right at the edge of everything I had prepared. But this is good. Maybe we, I like it. Maybe we should have volunteered for a bunch more random encounters. I think so. I think we should have checked out that other ship. Well, when we go back. <laughs> well, every time you guys are in wild space for an extended period of time, they're going to roll that random encounter. So there'll be plenty of opportunity to to potentially find other stuff. So we shall see. I would like it pointed out before we roll for initiative that I am taking cover behind Simon. <laughs> <laughs> I want that established right from the get-go. Oh, well, I guess I should. I should have pointed out again. You see these little triangles on the walls? I have them on the right layer. Those yeah. are the uh, arrow slits. No. Oh. Brian, so have, yes. As soon as she said, "Hey, I think it's the, uh, I think it's the whatever she said, the uh, Rosanna Arquettes. The Rosanna Arquettes. <laughs> um, I would like to have um, used." An ability that I have never gotten to use. Do mm -hmm. you want to save it for the start of the next encounter? Is there something you want um, to use here? Well, I, I want to use it. I want to have it active before we roll for in, before we roll for initiative, before that guy poked his head out. While we were just standing there hearing us scratching, mm -hmm. I would like to have um, used my uh, my bullet bulwark which uh, lets me extend a charge and gives me tremor sense for 30 oh. to a range of 30 feet. Very nice. Okay. I'll, I'll allow that uh, since, since they've said I, there's our toques, I'll allow that before we uh, roll initiative. Okay. And then it'll be a 30 foot, uh, it'll be a 30 foot radius aura. Okay. I like it. Okay. Any other questions, comments, complaints about tonight's session? Nope. These guys in. That's well, technically, good. this is the gate. Good yeah, session. And this is the gate. Uh, yeah. Each square is five feet, right? Yes. On this map? Should be. I may not have it centered. It looks like I don't have it centered on no, here. No, no, no. Or yeah, aligned. It's, yeah. It's all good. Okay. Three foot radius, or uh, it's some, um, but I think that it's listing the map itself is listing every square is ten feet because I gave myself a thirty foot aura, but it only went out fifteen feet. It's okay. I'll uh, I'll change it to a sixty foot aura, and then I'll that's a thirty foot aura. I'll look at it, see if I can fix it. I did that. I think I did that a couple sessions ago as well. I had some of the scale was screwed up on it. Not sure how I even do that, but regardless, probably not you. Oh yeah, I got grid cell distance ten feet. Let me change that to five feet. I don't know if that's going to automatically update your thing or not. That's Save okay. settings. Yeah. Holy, Holy shit. crap! That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> there we go. Okay, there we go. 
Now the grid should be accurate. Oh, I good. probably copied that wrong one over when I did this, but yeah. All right, guys. I hope that was fun for you guys. It was um, very much so. Good job. I'm not, yeah. Do you like the the I guess bonding weird things they've gotten here for fishing or for uh, the gambling oh, cool. and all that stuff, or is that oh, just kind of done for won. you guys? I won, so I like the gambling. <laughs> okay. I, I love gambling, but it just seemed like a push because more than likely, um, we're just going to take money from each other. As opposed to taking money from the NPC. Okay. Well, I, that's why I had both Flinch and uh, Grimzod doing it. So yeah. you're getting 10 gold at least from them every single time. You're yeah. just upset because I won and you didn't. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So yeah. next week, we'll uh, be back to uh, um, Into the Abyss. Good. Unless something changes between now and then. But uh, we'll start doing that every two weeks. Sounds good. Have a good night, guys. Good night. I'm out. You too. Guys. Be well. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, guys. Talk to you later.